just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. I'm here with the main man, Benny Roberts. What's going on, brother? How are you, bro? How you been, bros? What's been going on? Nah, not a lot, mate. Um, life after footy, you know what it's like. So mm. it's just, um, you know, trying to trying to find that next, um, I suppose, that next job. Mm. Um, next passion, you know. Next, exactly, that's the yeah, word I was yeah. thinking of. Um, so it's just all a new journey now. So you're doing, it's called Ben's... What's your, the company that you've got now? Yeah, so I've created my own company called Benefit Performance. Yep. Um, I thought it said Ben's Fitness Performance. That's what I was yeah. going to call it. I was nah, like, oh. yeah. Benny is in, obviously, because that was my name, so I've sort of done it that way. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just all about um, strength and movement. Yep. Um, training, coaching. Okay. And so like for people listening that may not be as athletically inclined, it's is it focused more on not just like heavy weight and getting big it's more about making your body move in the best way possible health connected as well to mental health as in kind of bring it all together 100 percent, bro yeah um, it's a good way to explain it actually the way you did um yeah it's it's, it's just pretty much injury prevention type stuff as well mm. um but like you mentioned just trying to get people more athletic mm. moving um when people hear that word athlete they sort of think it's it's you know, a rugby league player. Sonny or, Bill Williams at his peak. Yeah. <laughs> just run around killing blokes. An athlete's actually someone who just trains, mm. goes to the gym. Yeah. You know, um, so for me, it's just trying to get people, I suppose, the most athlete, athletic as possible. Yeah, okay. And that's the thing, like, uh, you know, I think it's, we're becoming more educated and understanding that, you know, the guy that is 120 kilos bench and fucking 300 kilos, he's actually physically not that healthy. You know, his body is, you know, tight back, injured fucking shoulder, can barely run. Yeah. That's actually not that, even though it's great, like, fuck, fair crack to him. Like, yeah. you know, great you did that or whatever. Mm. But it's actually not that physically healthy for him. No, well, not at all, bro. And, you know, like you said, he, he's probably in pain. Mm. Um, you know, I'm more impressed with someone that can can bench a solid number and then do the splits. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, I think... That's that stigma or that mentality for us as rugby league players, and you would have experienced as, as well. Um, you know, dudes just trying to lift as much weight as they can. Mm. Um, but what that leads to is, is obviously stiffness, um, you know, in their joints, and over time, a long period of time too, it then can create injuries. Yeah. Um, so for me, essentially, the way I like to look at it is, is to keep athletes in the game longer, okay. keep the boys playing longer, mm. um, but then also to get them pain free. Okay. Um, you know, if, if I can do that, then I'm doing my job. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that pain-free thing. Man, I don't know I don't know about when you played, but I felt like I was playing in pain all the time. <laughs> Literally. Bro, when, bro, the type of player that you were too, you know what I mean? You just like to run straight and hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially into big forwards too, bro. Yeah. It's, not, um, it's not smart. <laughs> but, you know, if like you said, and, and we, I suppose being pain-free was something that we never really experienced because... We didn't have enough time to sort of let the body recoup. Mm. The only way we knew how to do that was to get treatment, ice the injury, mm. you know, um, minimize the swelling, and then play again the, the following yeah. day. Yep. Um, is it, I've, I've heard that like now there is research, and I could be totally wrong, that icing actually isn't even good for you. Is that or some shit like that? Or like warming up isn't good for you? Or I don't know, some shit like that. Well, um, the ice part. We'll start with the ice okay, part. Okay. Too- um, yeah, so apparently something has come out saying that it's, it's not good for you. Wow, um, it's actually better to put some wa- something warm on it. Wow, yeah. Um, they say the reason why we ice is, but is f- like for you and I, mm. when we were playing, we had to ice our injuries to sort of get that swelling down because, as you know, physios can't treat the injury without the swelling being gone. Yeah. Um, so in the short term fix, that's probably the way to do it. Mm. But um, in the long term, it's probably not so so good. Wow. Um, Something that I've, I'm learning now and, and post career is, it's it's a way of your body speaking to you. Mm. Um, you know, if you flare up in in a certain spot, and a lot of the times you're going to flare up in joints. Um, you know, your knees, your ankles, yep. your elbows, your hips, mm. um, your back, and a lot of that's just pretty much your body, sort of telling you that something's wrong. Mm. But it's also a way; it's a protective mechanism that your body creates. Mm. So, what I think we should do now is when you've got an inflammation. Just let your body run its course, okay. yeah. Because it, what it's doing is protecting itself, and our body knows how to do that. Mm. I think the body's kind of underrated in that aspect. Mm. Um, but like you said, as as athletes or sports guys, they they need to try and be able to back it up seven days later yeah, or absolutely. six five days later, which is why they ice. Um, yeah. So, 
um, yeah, when you're talking about icing, that's that's probably that one there. Mm. Um, what was the second one? The like, don't warm up or like when you're about to do explosive stuff, don't stretch or something like that? Yeah, so um, you can stretch. Mm. I think there's a particular way to stretch, but... Um, like mobile stretching is probably yeah, better than yeah, static stretching? Yeah, like more mobile stretching rather than static stretching. If mm. you are going to static stretch, you'd probably only do it for a certain amount of time. Okay. Um, but the best example to give you, bro, is like you got to think, like you look at animals, right? They obviously are built different to humans, but... Mm. You don't see a cheetah stretching before it has to do a sprint to go get its killer. It's like an antelope and it's yeah. like, oh, I'll, just, yeah. I'll just touch me toes. <laughs> just touch me toes. Exactly, exactly. So there is a fine line yep. with that with okay. that one. Um, sometimes you, when you are tight, you've got to stretch before you run. Mm. But um, yeah, it's. I suppose it just depends on how tight that person yeah. is. Like for yeah. me personally. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, mate. No, it's all good. <coughs> um. I find that I don't really have to stretch as much anymore. Okay, um, wow. I can just sort of get into training or Is get into you're always up. moving your body in the correct way so it keeps it loose? Well, yeah, because um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a lot into my mobility now, mm. my mobility and flexibility, um, is, which is two different things. And I think when you can understand the difference between the two, you can then learn about, okay, how do I get more mobile or more flexible to be able to do what I need to do without having to stretch as much. Mm. Like what you said about, um, you know, the body's underrated because when you think about it, like we are predators and we've had millions of years of evolution to be the best predators that we can be. Mm. And so like you could in a sense say sport is a way of being a predator and, you know, you're high speed, yep. you're trying to, you know, you've got to, you're hunting something or whatever, mm. whether it would be hunting a try by, you know, but breaking tackles or whatever. Um, and so... To be the best at that and you roll your ankle and it inflames, it's basically saying like, you know, it's inflamed. Yep. You need to relax so that you can be a great hunter again rather than try to be a great hunter the next fucking day or whatever. Yeah, bro, 100%. Um, we're gladiators. Mm. Or with a modern day gladiator, would have to be a rugby league player or a rugby mm. union player or, or AFL a player. Or USA fighters. Yeah, UFC fighters. Yeah, okay, yeah. they're probably the ultimate. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's crazy? Is you ask a UFC fighter... Would you, you know, go play in a rel? Most of them would be like, fuck, running it straight at, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And you ask any league player, they're like, man, no <laughs> way would I get in the ring with yeah. those boys. It's um, like we mentioned before, we're just wide different. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, um, and you'd know with, you know, doing a bit of boxing and stuff like that, a lot of fighters are very humble, man. Oh, so like humble. you would never pick them to be boxers or UFC fighters. Absolutely. They're, they're humble, you know yep. what I mean? And they're very quietly spoken, but you mm -hmm. get them in a ring and they're just a different... Animals. Different Animals. Sport. Yeah. Petro Sivinasiv is a perfect example. I've used that in so many podcasts. He the first, he was the first NRL player that I'd met at the Broncos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was... Because like, so I still hadn't played rugby league. Like this is my, one of my first <laughs> days. Like I'd played rugby league, obviously mucking around with mates and that's where they'd see me, but not rugby league against the best in the, you know... PBC versus Kiba Park. None of that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, I had this idea that like these maniac forwards are just maniacs 24-7. Yeah. And I meet Petro and he's like, oh, hey, how you going, man? Like, this yeah, is a yeah. plane for Australia at the time. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I cannot believe how humble this guy is. Yeah. He's a killer on the field. Yeah. Bro, um, I'm pretty sure he was He was at the top, eh, for a good chunk of He's probably the goat decade. front row, really. Yeah. Like him and maybe Shane Webke, in my yeah. opinion. Glenn mm. Lazarus, maybe. Yeah. Um, Actually, what do you think about the uh, the doggy signings? Have you been around it or just kind of vaguely around the doggy signings? Um, I've, I've seen it. Obviously, I've seen it on um, social media and stuff yep. like that. Um, Bloke in a Bar Sports Network, you seen it on that? I did. <laughs> I did. No, I did. Because I, yeah, I follow you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, because I don't really watch much of the game, yeah. that's why I like to follow you because yeah. like you just update me like that. Yep. You know, and yep. Whether it's injuries or dude signings and stuff mm. like that, that's, that's where I get all my info from. Mm. So... Um, but bro, so the, the the three the three lads that they've signed is it, is it uh, Flanagan? So we've got Flanagan, Kotrick, Kotrick, Adokar, yeah. Matt Burton is the next year. Matt Burton's like the next big thing. Five yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Corey Allen, but the the main ones are basically Adokar, Kotrick, Flanagan, and Burton. Mm. Um, yeah, like um, they've all got big potential, mm. and and to be to be honest with you, a lot of them haven't even like reached their Full, full potential, you know what I Kodrick's mean. Kodrick's still twenty one. Yeah, and he's he's already played New South yeah, Wales. Hundred percent. You know, so uh, good sort too. Yeah, <laughs> I see that. On his <laughs> league too, bro. He is man. He's a pretty good looking dude. Eh? The Serbian sex god, I like to call him. <laughs> Sydney's not uh, ready for him, bro. Sydney is not ready for him. 
Uh, is he ready for Sydney? That's yeah. The thing. <laughs> yeah, true. There's some girls out there that will just run a <laughs> muck on him. Those Sydney girls, they've been in the trenches right. for a while, you, some of those Sydney girls. You're going to have to give them the heads up. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that shit. I don't know. No, I'm, a just, I'm a good, good humble man yeah. that sits at home each weekend. <laughs> That's it, bro. That's it. Um, no, yeah, so you got him, bro. Um, Flanagan's obviously got a big future. Yeah, absolutely. I sort of felt sorry for him this year, man. Bro, wow. You know, um, Ruthless. And then that's what the games come to, you mm. know, and, and, and that's probably another thing a lot of players have to understand that it's a business at the end of the day, mm. you know, um, you're your own company or you're your own business. So, Absolutely. Um, the one a bit of advice I'd give to all those players coming through is you need to do what's best for you Absolutely. and your family, not what's best for the club. Mm. Yeah, they give you your first opportunity, but... They can let you go like that as well. Hundred you percent. Know? Perfect example of that. And I know that you know he didn't handle the dogs leaving the best, and he's admitted that. Perfect example is Sonny Bill. Like yeah. he took care of himself, yep. and he let his on the field actions speak for themselves. Yep. And now he'll go down as a legend. When you know a lot of you know who knows if he stays at the dogs, maybe he doesn't get a good deal, or they yeah. they fuck him around. His yeah. mental health goes down. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah. So for him, man, it, it was. <clears throat> Like pe- people understand now why he did it exactly. Um, but at the same time, credit to him, and like we've spoken about his mentality before, um, he sort of knew that mm. he could see that from an early stage. That mm. yeah, he was like, the, I'm pretty sure he was the million dollar baby, you right? Know, in, he was in, in rugby league at the yeah, time, absolutely. So he was on a decent wicket, yeah. Um, but I think he could he could sort of sense how the game was going or where the game was going mm. in terms of it's a business. Mm. So. Um, you know, and I think everyone else has sort of seen that as well now. Absolutely. You know? And you and I, I think, because we've been there, done that, we, we sort of can see, we sort of look at it in a different perspective as we did when we first started playing. Man, it's, you know, it's just like, again, fans listening, I, I totally understand when you get frustrated when a player leaves. Like, so I always try to say, because I get where the fans are coming from yeah. too. Like, that, yep. that's your player. Like, you love him. You, yep. you go to work each week yep. and you trade your labor to pay for a game that you love and you and he's your guy. Like you, you buy the jersey, you go to game. So don't get me wrong, this is not me sitting here going, woe well, is me and the footy players are hard hard done by. It's more just me explaining our mindset, you know. Like yeah, yeah. um and a guy like Sonny, you know, what happened with him, you know, yet was it handled good or bad or whatever, but he's kind of been proven right in a lot of the ways. Exactly. You know, the the positive impact he's been able to have by becoming an international star is yeah. incredible. Absolutely incredible. I th- I think he he had a different dream to everyone else. Yeah. You know, for you and I, for for me, oh, sorry, I can only speak on my on behalf of myself, but mm. I had a dream of playing rugby league. Mm. So that's all I had in my head. That was my goal. Mm. Where I think he actually had a dream and it was to come to probably the best athlete he could possibly be. Mm. And the way to do that is to challenge himself. So that's why you see he was probably one of the first to, you know, hop codes mm. and do well. Um, so... You know, think, of, think of the athletes that, you know, eventually uh, once he retires, I mean, he's already helped, but think about the amount of young athletes that can learn so much off Sonny yep. and the way he handled himself as a business, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and got the most out of his God-given ability, if you if you believe in that or, yep. or whatever. He trained his ass off too. Mm. Um, you know, how many athletes out there left millions of dollars on the table yep. um, because they were loyal, you know, because yeah. they were... You know, the, the the tough thing is is that when you're killing it, the club talks about loyalty, brotherhood, yep. bleed for each other. Mm-hmm. When you're not killing it, all of a sudden, business, sorry, mate, yep. don't have any money in the cap. Yep. You know, you do this for the club because, you know, you're holding back some young fella. Yep. Um, and yeah, so as I said, like with this Sonny Bill, obviously maybe it was handled, could have been handled a bit differently. But outside of that, like... Done so good. Yeah, like it, well, I suppose it, it just proved itself, didn't it? Yep. The whole outcome and, and of what he's achieved, and mm. um, to be honest with you, it, it's it's probably helped him as a person as well. You know, mm. like surrounding himself with good people, absolutely the people that are sort of giving him advice and whatnot. And he was like twenty one or twenty at this time. He was so young. Yeah, man. yeah, twenty one, twenty two. Like mm. people, we forget. We yeah. put these like these guys are so young in their yeah. head. And and that's the thing, bro. Like you, like you and I would probably be able to say is like when when you make these decisions, the first thing you think of are the fans. Mm, absolutely. You know, like you, you're always thinking, oh, they're going to be they're screwing gonna hate or, me or they're going to hate me. Like, mm. But it's not a personal thing. It's, oh, at the end of the day, you got to put my, you got to put bread on, you got to break bread for your family. 100%. Man. You're thinking you know the mean? fans are going to hate me, but if I don't take this decision, my kids aren't going to have as much resources. Yeah. 
Yep. And I've only got a certain amount of time to do it. Mm. So sometimes you even think like, look, all right, the fans can hate me as yep. long as my family loves me and yep. I can do the right thing by them. Mm. Um, yeah, it's so tricky. It's, I always say rugby league or any professional sport is the only sport in the world where you've got the same kind of, and again, not as much as Army. I'm not, not discounting the incredible things that the Army does. Yep. But you, you've, you're expected this brotherhood of life, pretty much willing to die for each other. Like mm. when, you, when you play footy with a sky, especially ones that a squad that does really well, yep. you, if there's a punch on, you're in there. Yeah. Anything, they're your brothers. Yep. But you also have got this weird mix with business. And so yeah. it's business and brotherhood. And there's not many other um, professions in the world that mix the two yeah, and yeah, make yeah. it so such a, a gray area of like what is right and what is wrong whereas like yeah. if i'm working at facebook and my results aren't speaking for themselves or whatever it's kind of like yeah they moved me on it's like yeah like they moved me on whatever yeah um there's no talk of like brotherhood and like yeah, can you go yeah. fight that bloke from me or yeah. you know whatever <laughs> um take us back to a young fella born at westmead born in westmead yeah born at westmead sydney um but I was raised out at Southwest Sydney. Okay. Um, out Campbelltown ways. Yep. Okay. Um, it's on the map nowadays, bro. It's it's know, it's, it's, a, it's cool to be from out there now. It is, man. It is. It's growing. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. It's growing, man. It's connecting with Sydney now. Sydney. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. getting closer to Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why it's Southwest Sydney now. Okay, okay. It's just not Southwest. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Grew up out those ways. Um, most of my mum's family's from over there. Okay. Um, as well, so. I was pretty fortunate to be close to all my cousins mm, okay. um, and, and my grandparents and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and so were both your parents Samoan or one was Aussie, one was Samoan? Or? Yeah, no, nah, both both Samoan, yep. um, but both born in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, yep. so um, they were obviously first generation in New Zealand and they both moved to Australia. Okay. They met over here actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So um, that's pretty much how we got to, or how I come to Australia anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, yeah, man, Southwest, I grew up out there, um, started playing footy when I was about four. Okay, so um, really young age. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose it was obviously being the number one sport mm. um, in Australia, it was it was no brainer. I think my dad, he, he loved rugby union. Okay. Yeah, personally, but um, rugby union wasn't that big. Yeah. Out where we were, you know, it was just rugby league, sort mm. of out near the country ways there. Mm. So we played out there um, in group six, it's called. Okay. Yep. Um, for a junior club called Norell and Jets. And so at what point growing up did you did you follow a team at all? Was there a, a, like or was it just you played it for for the love of it? Yeah, um I followed I followed Balmain Tigers. Oh really? Originally because I love the colours. Oh yeah. And, and, you know, young, yeah when the you're emblem yep, and, and, okay. all, and all the rest. But as I got older because my, my club was actually blue and white, so um okay. I, I followed Canterbury. Okay. Um, you know, when Terry Lamb was playing. Yep. Um, and he's under, and he's like he's not underrated, but he's underrated. Like you don't yeah. get him said in the same sentence as like Lockie or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And yet his achievements are like right up where the yeah, best, yeah. best of all time. Oh really. man, yeah. Like you said, his his numbers mm. like speak for themselves. I'm sure if you, yeah, you, you researched it, yeah, you'd be wondering well, why isn't this guy sort of yeah mentioned in that spoken same, about in the same sort of absolutely. manner. You know? Yeah. Um, but I, I loved watching them as kids as a kid growing mm. up. Um. And I think just because they're the same color as well, man. Yeah, it's so when you're a kid, man, you just pick your side and yeah. you go with it, like same colors, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, growing up, were you always, you know, doing really well, or you're a slow starter and you grew into your footy ability, or? Um, I was doing really well. I, I understood the game at a at a young age in terms of like get the ball run that way <laughs> or to tackle. Yeah. Because yeah. I had an older brother. Okay. So. I think, you know, when you have an older sibling, you sort of pick things up a lot. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, I understood the game in that way. So, I sort of felt like for my age group, I was I was kind of just ahead of the other kids because okay. I understood the whole mm. concept of the game. Um, so, um, yeah, I started playing at four, um, pretty much up until under 11s. Wow. I was... I was, I was you know, because there were no positions back then. Yeah, either. you just run around. So you just pretty much get the ball. Were you a run. big kid? I wasn't, bro. No, yeah, okay. no I, was, I was pretty small. Okay. Um, I was I was pretty short and tiny, so I was more of a centre. Yeah, I, I used to okay. think I was a centre. <laughs> my, my number was four. Favourite yeah. number was four, so I was yeah, like, yeah, okay, I'm a centre. But... Actually, I was saying before, so Tim Cahill was your cousin and you, you did a lot with him. Yeah. Did he ever play rugby league growing up? No, nah, only backyard. Only backyard. Only backyard How did he go backyard? Was... You tell him up or what? 
<laughs> now how it would work is it was always the older ones versus the younger ones so what? we were on the same team okay so in the same you team. know what i mean he like because there were three of them and three of three me and my brother so yeah. we just split up the two okay. oldest boys would play against the four of us okay um, yeah, yeah. So what and you mean. just do your best you know yeah 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 uh but no he went all right man. he went all right he went all right any stories of timmy cahill doing you and the boys getting up to no good um oh man <laughs> <laughs> Not not anything too bad. Okay, um, just young. We kids. were rat bags, bro. But yeah, uh, all kids were. You know what I mean? Like, um, was he always we a gun kids. growing up? Like, we, we, like you know, because you know he's probably him and Harry Kuehl are probably the greatest players to come out of our country. Apologies mm. if I'm missing anyone. Yeah. Um, you know how you can always kind of tell like these guys are going to be crazy superstars. Kind of. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, man. I think his older brother and his younger brother were the more wow, really the ones that we, like people looked at and sort of thought these wow. kids got up like they got, I suppose the talent they got mm. the possibilities of playing. Mm. Um, the oldest one was a goalkeeper, Sean. Okay. From what I knew as a kid growing up, mm. watching him play, he was a gun. Yeah, like, wow, okay, unbelievable goalkeeper. Wow. Um, the younger brother, he's a freak. He's he's pretty skillful with a footy. Like mm. you give him a soccer ball and he can do anything. With really, it. wow. Um, but Timmy. He had the 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 drive. Okay. Yeah. So the key ingredient. Yeah. So it's always yeah. So I th- and I think he always knew that he wasn't the most talented player, mm. which probably which is probably why he was more dedicated. Mm. Okay. I think the other two weren't as dedicated as the as he was. Mm. Um, but naturally, gifted wise, they were both pretty. Wow, freaky. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So as you saw him rise and him being your cousin, were you just sitting there going, "Man, this isn't like because." Tim Cahill wasn't just like a good Australian player. Yeah, he was good overseas in the EPL. Well, that's that's the thing, bro. Like, because I don't follow much EPL either. Yeah, I never so did. So I only watched really... him play. Okay. So if he was playing, and it was like at a time where I could watch it, mm. I'd watch it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but even even to today, uh, you know, I probably still don't understand how much of a big deal he was. Because like, you don't know that much about the EPL, no. Nah. And then I went over there for Super League, obviously. Mm. And man, I was meeting dudes that had. The Everton badges done on uh-huh. him, or his number, or they they got. A, I'm pretty sure they got a statue of him at Everton. Bro, he he's a gun. Yeah, and gun. I, and I just thought, yeah, he's a good gun player. Yeah, 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 but I don't think I sort of see him in the same in the same perspective light. that everyone else. He's does. the guy that dropped the ball in the backyard and cost you the game. Yeah, he's that guy. He's the one that never ran it. Just gave it to me. <laughs> and I'd get smashed. <laughs> Everton Smitherton. Yeah, but that's it. He just headbutt like that. That's about it. Nah, um, but um, yeah, no, nah, and and that's the thing, man. Like, I, and I think it just goes to show the type of person he is and how humble he is. Because mm. when when I when I see him or when I talk to him, it's just, just like, normal. It's him. It's Mate. him. You know, he's not mm. who he is. You know, so um, no, nah, it's still pretty surreal to mm. me, man. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, looking back on all his achievements and that, I'm like, far, bro, that's, that's pretty cool. Hectic, that's bro. pretty cool. From I've Kings always Grove. had time for Tim Cahill. Like, I'm always in the sense of like, I don't follow soccer. Yeah. But when he speaks, you can just tell there is this humbleness to him, respectfulness. Mm. And he's such a superstar. It's very rare, like world superstar, yeah. that you can feel that vibe of like humbleness, respectful. Because yeah. he's got every right if he wanted to be, to be like, I'm the man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I fucking did way less than <laughs> I think I'm the man. <laughs> I'll believe you, mate. I'll believe you. <laughs> um, okay, so what point for you personally did it? Um, did you start kind of making rep teams or, or anything like that? So, um, I... I, like I spoke to you earlier, like I always had this thing in my head I was going to play f- first grade mm. from a young age. I, and I never had this doubt. Um, playing rep teams and stuff like that, I, I, I started playing in the country for group six teams. Okay. Um, but I, I was never a starter. I don't think I was ever a starter. Oh, wow. I, not, not at the start anyways. Then okay. I sort of worked my way in. Yeah. Um, but like we just mentioned with Timmy, I, I just always knew if I train hard, you know, and practice, I'm, I'll, I'll be sweet. I'll mm. get better and better. So I, I was always fortunate to make rep teams um, growing up, but I was never the first pick kid okay. in my position. Okay. You know, um, I always knew, okay, but I always felt like I, I learned something from that mm. and every, I'd go back a better player the following year and, okay. then I'd, you know, I'd work on that. And then Where do you think that came from, that work ethic? Because it's, um, you know, we were speaking about earlier, like, you know, Polynesians and the things that, not Polynesians, like in general, but the Polynesian footy players, like... yeah. The, the confidence to go, this is what I need to do, didn't make it, need yeah. to fix this, that. Where do you think that kind of came from for you? I think obviously the support of my parents. Yeah, okay. Um, 
and like I said to you, my, both my parents were born in New Zealand, so mm. they weren't from Samoa. Okay. Okay. So um, I think their, their 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 thought process was different to your usual mm. um, Samoan or Polynesian family. Mm. Um, my dad had a good work ethic, so yeah, okay. um, he was real big for us boys on um, being fit. Oh, really? Because that was probably the, the most challenging part oh, for that's us. That's the foundation yeah. for everything, man. For, an, for anything, mm. and, and especially because he knew we weren't naturally fit dudes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he was always on our case about, um, you know, he'd come home from work from doing 12, 14-hour shifts, oh, sometimes really? longer, and be like, you boys been for your run? Mm. You know, and we'd be like, nah, he goes, go on, out you get. Oh, how good is that? And so, yeah. so he'd work 14 hours a day. Go get all the boys. There was two brothers. Did you yeah, say that? yeah, three. There were three of us. And what? Go for a run with you, or just make sure that you? No, went no. On he the would run. make us go for our run. Yeah, so, okay. um, you know, we had a little track that we used yeah. to do. I think it was only about two k's or whatever. Any any memories of like crazy times that he made you like seven at night or nine at night or anything like that? Um, or waking you up early in the morning? No, nah, not really. He nah, he was he never done anything really like that. Okay. Like I said, he was very supportive, but he also just tried to instill in us: if you want to do this, this mm. is what you got to do. Okay. So, you know, it was by choice, mm. but. To start off with, he was pretty pushy with it. Like, come mm. on, you haven't been for your run. Go yeah, for your go run. On. So helpful, bro. So road running, yeah. So yeah. Um, obviously because my older brother was a front rower, so he definitely needed it. Oh, wow. <laughs> the big boy just trying to get up yeah. that hill. Yeah. And uh, looking back on it now, it was kind of like we'd start off together, but then it used to be like, yeah, see you later, bro. I'm going. <laughs> and then he'd just come back. And then um, it got to a point for me where it became a habit. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah? Um, and I enjoyed it. Mm. So I sort of feel like that's why I sort of had a bit of a jump too on on, on most young kids my age because, okay. like I, I say to my wife, like um, I was running to training, which was yeah. like so I used to do that for soccer. I was bro. like twelve yeah. mm. and I was running three k's to training, crazy. train, and then my dad would pick me up. And that's me crazy. Home. Like it's a different but mindset. My wife even said that, like what twelve year old would do that? Mm, like wants absolutely. to think like that. And I honestly believe that's the difference with rugby, like the boys that do make it yeah. and the ones that don't make it is absolutely, you know. You love that, and yep. you're just wired different. And it's just like it's weird, like because I, I I did the same thing. We used to live in this like <laughs> hilly ass place. I mean, one time I ran in my boots on <laughs> on road on the gravel to to soccer training, yeah, and back. And it was no one told me to do it. No, I I just did it. Yeah, you know what I mean, I was just like, I got to do this. Yeah, and I like think back now. I'm like, you fucking idiot. What are yeah, you doing yeah. running in boots? Yeah. It's like four Ks, three Ks or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And so That's crazy. same mindset for you. Like, just, I got to do it. Like, this is what I need to do kind of thing. Yeah, like, so so fitness was always a thing for me because I knew it wasn't one of my strengths. Mm. If, if I had a whole off season off, I'd be chasing my tail for the, for the rest pre-season. of the year, yeah, pre-season okay. and wow. the year. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well. You know, where, as you know, you want the best foundation you can possibly get. Absolutely. For when the comp starts, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Everything else just falls into place. Absolutely. But um, for for me, yeah, that was probably one of my weakest points is my conditioning. So yeah. I think once I knew that and understood that, mm. and because like I said to you, I never had it, I never had doubt that I wanted that I was going to play first grade. Mm. And I'm just so lucky that I, I got to play first grade. But I honestly believe it's because of that. That yeah. mentality and that absolutely that hard work ethic driven into me early on. Absolutely, absolutely. Like it's so important that 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 fitness is such a base, man. Yeah, it's such a base. Like yep. I say all the time, Billy Slater's not most underrated asset was his ability to do high speed repeat efforts. Yeah. In the first minute of the game and the 80th minute of the game. Yeah. And that's what, same with Teddy. That's his most underrated asset is yeah. his fitness. Well, I was just about to say, on top of fitness is speed. Yeah. And those two have both of them. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, if you've got both of them two, you're pretty much... You're pretty much can play in a row. Yeah. As it's long just, as you can hold the ball. It becomes a, a skill thing then. It's, yeah. it's not so much the physical attribute. Like Absolutely. Um, but yeah, bro, like that's, that was one thing I had to work on was mm. my fitness. So at what point did it feel like, did you get your first contract offer or, or you know, you're, wow, this is beginning to happen for me? Yeah, so um, it, it happened pretty quick. So so I played all my juniors for West Magpies because mm. we were living out Campbelltown ways. Yep. So I played um, Harold Matthews one year. Then the following year was SG Ball grade. So I had to play up an age for SG Ball. Mm. And then that same year I played SG Ball, I ended up playing Jersey Flag. And at yep. the time it was 20s. Okay. So I was only 16, turning 17. Wow, wow. And I started playing 20s. Mm. Um, and then from there... So I've I, I got to tell you this story, bro. Because okay, I, I tell a lot of people, this This was... I feel like, you know, when you have... Um, fork in the road moments. Fork in the road moments. Mm. This, this, this is one of them that pretty much, I think, steered me to this. Yeah, this 100%. Way. So we played SG Ball, like I just mentioned. We won the comp. Mm. 
So we went back to the lease club. The boys are getting on it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I wasn't drinking, obviously, at the time because I was only 16, 17, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I was, I, we were leaving the celebrations because I couldn't stay around. So mm. we, you know, we went back to the club, had, had a feed, whatever. And then we were leaving. And the Jersey Fleet coach at the time um, sort of pulled me up. He was like, oh, hey, um, we've got a few players missing for our Jersey Fleet team tomorrow mm. um, that are playing in the team. Would you make yourself available? And my old man looked at me and I sort of said, to be honest with you, I want to stay and just hang out with the boys, eh? Mm, yeah. And um, he's like, oh, okay, no worries. So anyways, I said to the dude, nah, nah, sweet man. I'm gonna, um, I'm just going to hang out here. Yeah, enjoy the win. Enjoy the win. Um, and and, and I, I walked my parents to the car and my old man stopped me again. He goes, hey, son. And I said, yeah. He goes, remember how I told you about opportunities? That they had, you know, when an opportunity comes, you got, you got to grab it. Mm. And I sort of didn't think of it as an opportunity. I was like, nah, like... It's only a one-off game. Yeah, it's a one in. game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and anyways, he's like, I think you should take it. Mm. And I was like, all right. So I cried. Yeah. I was oh, like, yeah, all right, no worries. So I ended up jumping in the car with him, going home while the boys were all getting on the piss, <laughs> celebrating. And I was like, all right. So I woke up next day and I played. Yeah. Um, so did you go back in and tell the coach or did you yeah. ring the coach? No, no. I went back in and told him, said, bro, yeah, I'm going to play then. Um, okay. I'll, I'll be available. What time do I have to get there? Wow. Didn't even train or whatever. I was like, yeah, sweet. So, so I got there. Um, got back in the car, started crying. Yeah, started crying. I was like, <laughs> You know, sort of drink with the boys. Yeah, yeah, um, bro. And then um, it just so happened, Tim Sheens had just taken over as West Tigers coach. Mm. Um, so after that first game, I handled myself pretty well. I played pretty well. So the coach is like, "Mate, you want to keep playing with us?" So mm. wow. I was like, "Yeah, cool, sweet." Because I just thought it was a one-off. That's mm. so to me, it was like, "Yeah, whatever." But mm. so I ended up playing the rest of the year in flag. In okay. and out, of the, oh, coming off the bench, whatever. Okay, and you're 17 old, years old. I didn't care because I just turned 17. So yep. I was like, yeah, cool, playing. And this was when you had first grade, reserve grade, and flag all in the one day. Wow. Yeah, so sick. I was like, cool, I'm playing in front of 700 people. How this good is that? sick, you yeah, know. So 100%. I was buzzing. Mm. Um, and it just so happened Tim Sheens watched me play one of them games. Yep, wow. And he had just signed as coach. So that same year, he actually got in contact with me and wanted me to go train part-time, full-time with the West Tigers. What? Yeah. Was so you, were you buzzing? Were I was. You? I was like, for real. And and like my manager at the time, Remy goes, bro, like, yeah, yeah, he wants you to come train part time, mm. full time. So I was only in year eleven at the time. Mm. So I would literally, wow, probably every now, I'd, I'd go either straight from school when it finished, I'd have to catch a train to training at um, Lidcombe, mm. over what it was in the afternoons, because you know, obviously, with first grade, you train in the mornings and afternoons. Yeah. So I could make the afternoon sessions. Okay. But every now and then, they'd want me to come in for the morning sessions to do field mm. as well in the mornings with some. Ruck, ruck stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I was doing that, bro. Within a year, I was. Wow. Yeah. That one moment, mm, bro. Your yeah. dad is the goat. And I still look back on it now. I'm like, man, thank you. You're like, because oh, who knows what could have happened? I probably could have got pissed then and just. Hundred you know percent. Well, like I mean? people don't realize, like it's that that spot. Someone else could have played there. Yeah. And they kill it. Mm. They get the opportunity in first grade. Yeah. You get stuck behind that guy. Yeah. You get injured. And then another guy comes right, and yeah. boom, before you know it, you're six down the packing yeah. order. I, I, I probably wouldn't have even made it. That's yeah. the way I look at it anyways. Oh, 100%, bro. I definitely probably wouldn't have made it if I didn't have that. Wow. Because then from there, um, so the following year, so... so what, you, what about your first your first session or one of the first sessions rocking up and seeing the first graders? Do you like? Is there one of the sessions that stands out where you're going, holy moly? Well, you know what was cool, bro? Um, they were all like that to me because I was like buzzing anyway. I was mm. like, man, you know, this is... So I went and bought myself a brand new pair of boots. Thinking, yeah, I'm, you know, I got to get new boots. And, yeah, fresh as, uh, fresh as. <laughs> so I did, um, I did part time, full time that year, um, and then the following year I went back and played flag again. Yeah. Um, because I was still only twenties. Yeah. So you would have been um, so much better that second so I year felt too. So com- like, yeah. And, and that's where I got a lot of belief. Okay. Yeah. So mm. that's what I mean when I said it, it, this is how it happened. Yeah. So within a whole year, I'd gone from SG ball playing up an age. Mm. Flag played the rest of the year in flag, mm. went part time, full time, wow. all in that one year. And then the following year, I played flag again, and I, I just felt like a different person then. Yeah, absolutely. So thought, I've actually got the good sense to be able to play yeah. good, and I suppose that's when I started really becoming progressing more zoned into it. in. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, so I played flag again that year, and then I made Australian schoolboys. Oh shit! Yeah, so and, and the uh, starting side as well. Yeah, yeah, started. So, so you've f- gone from a guy that's like a bench rep, rep player. Yeah. In twelve months, essentially. Yeah. Starting the, in Australia. Within twelve months, yeah, I reckon wow. it was under twelve months. So, it was funny because the, in the, in that um, that part time full time, there was another kid that got pulled into it as well from yeah. Queensland. His name was Benji Marshall. Oh shit! <laughs> so me and Benji were pretty tight. 
right? yeah okay and, and all the boys used to give it to us because we would like be just hanging out and like sort of we'd be the cheeky ones in the, okay in the yep, squad, yep. you know yeah um but then obviously benji would go back up to keeper park yep and then i'd just go back to my team um and so you were both the young sixes pretty much six and seven six and seven yeah so Shit. but that following year so that following year we actually got to play in the trial we were mm. lucky enough to play in the trial against the london broncos no way so we were 17 at the time yeah. yeah um so he played the trial i played in the trial with him and then he went his way and then i went my way to west yeah okay because yep. he was still at school as well yeah yep. um and then i'm pretty sure he debuted that year yeah wow yeah all the, all the following year so for schoolboys even so i made australian schoolboys and so did he Wow. So we were the six and seven for the Australian yeah. schoolboys. Bro, what a journey. Yeah. Just from that one conversation. Yeah. And it was funny because because we had already known each other from, from footy, mm. from West Tigers. Yeah. So when the when the Queensland team and, you know, the CCC, the CHS and the other team come, me and Benji just sort of, yeah, what's going on? Bro? Yeah, yeah, what's happening? And I was like, how do you know each other? Like, yeah. Oh, same club. We're same from West Tigers. West Tigers. We're playing, we're trying to <laughs> whatever. Just part-timers. You know? Not a big deal, bro. Yeah. Um, but bro, yeah. And then... Um, so he debuted that year. He we made schoolboys. Yeah. Um. And then I ended up debuting for, well, reserve grade. Yeah. Okay. I played my so, I went flag following year, and I ended up playing finishing off playing reserve grade. Fuck! How good is that, bro? Yeah. yeah. Your dad's the goat, bro. I know. Yeah. The yeah. Goat. I always say, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm always grateful, man. Every everything he's, he did for me, I'm grateful. Bro, you look back. I look back now, and I'm like, man, my dad similar. Used to work like, so many hours, bro. Yeah. Like he he so you know the distance between Brisbane and Gold Coast about now and about an hour. Yep. He literally used to wake. This is when I was playing soccer. He would wake up in the morning about four, go do his weights in the shittest weights, like old weights that are like <laughs> red rusted. And this is before the science the about and all that. yeah. yeah and, but okay. it was also before like gym was only for gym junkies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, but he wasn't a gym junkie dude. He just loved to be healthy and fit. Yeah. Wake up four o'clock, do he he would have a cold shower every morning. Not not because the science said to do that. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is, 30 years ago yeah, or, or yeah. you know less 20 years ago yep. he just had a cold shower because it's like that's you know he wanted to prove to himself that he fucking could have a cold shower right, right, yeah. and so he'd, then he'd do weights he'd drive up to Queensland uh, sorry up to Brisbane work all day 10-12 hours he would drive back to the Gold Coast pick me up drive yeah. back up to Brisbane to train wow. with the Queensland Raw yeah. sit in the car do more work I would come out at like 8.30 at night Get back in the car, drive all the way back down to the Gold Coast, nearly falling asleep. Like, I was going to say, you'd be asleep. Bro, he was so fucked every single time, so oh, tired. Yeah. Could barely, like, he could barely get in the door by the time. And he, and he would do it three times a week. Mm. Um, and then the next day, wake up again, four o'clock in the morning, back up. Yeah. Um, it'll probably, what's the date? He's about to, uh, I won't, can't say it yet, but he's about to get, let's just say he's going to get an Order of Australia for something. I'll, I'll announce what it is when it, yeah, when it happens. Yeah. But so he is. A maniac. Yeah. But it's a similar situation with your day. Like work those 14 hour days and just yeah. put in your head. Like he was saying, he, was, he would never like push me like you have to do it. But he'd always say like, you put in the work, we'll support you. You yeah. put in the work, we'll support yeah. you. And Bro, it's, that. it's a spin out because that, that year. So obviously I'd finished school then. Mm. Um, after that pre-season, part-time, full-time pre-season wow. with the Tigers. And I started, I started an apprenticeship. Oh, I started no. doing carpentry. Okay, yeah. And... Um, I started missing training sessions because of it. Wow. Because I was working so far away. Mm. And it got, I didn't realize, but I was like, oh, I can't make training today, mate. I'm, I'm Just working. work. Yeah. You know? And, and I had this mentality, I've, I've got to work. Yeah, yeah, you've got to work. You've got to get a job. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? yeah. Absolutely. And then, again, my old man said to me, listen, man, like, if, if, if you want to take this seriously, like, we're happy to support you. Wow. Because I was still at home. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's like, um, but you just got to make sure that you do what you can to, to do your best to make it. Mm. So I was very fortunate like that, you so, know, very so grateful good. and something that I sort of want to do for my kids as well. Absolutely. Um, and it's weird. He, with My dad said the exact same thing of like, as long as you're having a full crack, yeah. we'll support you. Yeah. But if you stop having a full crack, go and work. Yeah, see you later. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, that's so good, bro. Okay, so that's so a, you, so you're in the first grade squad, you're training. Is there any sessions that you remember with the forwards going skits just like bashing each other or any? Oh, bro, when I first seen that sort of stuff, <laughs> hey, so wrestling sessions. Yeah. Bro, it was a big shock to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, especially because the forwards, they love it. Hey? That's, so that's, that's their bread and butter. So 100%. they, they got to be hard at that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but when I first started and I seen it, I was like, and, and obviously because I've never trained at that intensity or yeah. being around that environment bro mm. i was nervous yeah absolutely and and i struggled like just because you know yourself the the whole wrestling game it's that's a big part of the, 
the the game now. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the contact, and how every... hard and you know physical it is. Like mm. if you're a good wrestler, it's a lot easier. But as a oh, kid, yeah, you know, you, you like I said, I was only 18 mm. at the time, and I was like. It was so fresh to me. Yeah, um, and you're a half as well. Yeah, and I was a half, so yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to stay next to the, the smallest bloke in the squad. Next to the you know? winger. It's like, partner up, I'd be like trying to... Uh, wingers, just, wingers and halves get together. Yeah, or well, me and Benji just partnered up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too, so Gentleman's like, agreement. Yeah. Um, but there were no specific sessions because um, like I said too, bro, I think because to me it was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was hard, but at the same time, I enjoyed You're it. You're just flying, bro. Yeah. Every, yeah. Like, you just can't believe how luck, like how great everything is, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so what made you sign with Dogs then? Because everything seemed to be going really well. It was, bro. It was. And um, obviously, the the Tigers 105, didn't they? 2005. 2005, Broncos 06. Yeah. Yep. Um, so um, I was off contract. Mm. And at the time, I had no vision to go anywhere else or no mm. goal. My goal was to stay at West Tigers because. I was close to playing first grade, so I was like, I'm going to play for the Tigers. I'm playing yeah. for the Tigers. Um, and Scotty Prince was in limbo at the time in terms of didn't know whether he was going to Gold Coast. Because okay. that was the big thing, right? They won the comp. Yep. And then um, at the same time, but he hadn't made his decision and he wasn't going to make it till later on in the year. Okay. And for me, I was like, frick, I had no other offers. Mm. Uh, my manager at the time said, so I think they offered me like 30K. And mm. it was a part. It was. It wasn't even full time, so I oh. couldn't understand it. You know, wow, and I was like, wow. I've been doing this for the last two years. Like, yeah, why yeah. aren't I full time yet? Yep. Um, so, so they, Tigers they, offered you that. The uh, Tigers offered me thirty grand. Okay. And and um, I was like, all right, listen. So I went home, had a chat with my dad, and I had to think about it. And there was, there was another office, so mm. I was like, yeah, sweet. I'm uh, I'm just gonna sign it then. Mm. Um, I was just trying to get more money off him at the time. Yeah. So yeah. my manager was like, I'll I'll see what I can do, try and get you more. Says, yep, sweet, no worries. And then within that period where he was going to go see what he could do, he rang me up and goes, mate, you wouldn't believe it. I've got another offer. I said, oh, cool, who's it from? And he said, um, Canterbury Bulldogs. And um, they've actually offered you double what Tigers oh, offered you. Wow. And a full-time contract. Yeah, that's the key. And this is, they just wanted to know four. Yeah. Like at, at, yep. and, and, and at that time too, like, um, bro, you look at their... You, you look at their, t- their roster they had right. and had coming through, like Sonny had just debuted. So they had, you know, Willie Mason, Rennie. Marco Mealy, Rennie Matua, Willie Tonga, um, you know, Brent Sherwin was carving at the time, one Nasty. of the best halves. Well, Nasta was leaving. Okay, so he had just, he had just um, signed with Roosters. Okay, yeah. So that's why my manager was like, mate, there's, oh, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's an open for you there. Um, and I was like, I had a chat with my old man and, you know, um, he, he was like, mate, well, they're a very multicultural club. Yep. You know, they got a lot of the boys there that, that um, R- Roy's there, mm. Willie's there, Sonny's there. Mm. So you got a couple of Islanders there as well, you know? Mm. And, and obviously they're a gun team. Yeah. They're a gun team at the time. Absolutely. Um, so I was like, yep, I'm doing it. It's like care. a match made in heaven, you know? Yep. You got people that, you know, it's comfortable for you yep. in the yep. sense you, well, that's, you can relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it was, bro. Yeah. Um, and not only that, because they were... It was a Canterbury Bulldogs. Yeah, they were killing it. So they were one of the best teams at the time. Yeah. And it was full time. Mm. So um, Tigers came back. Mm. I said to them, I said, man, well, what's the Tigers going to do? So they came back and offered me exact same as what... All of a sudden. Yeah. That makes me so mad. And and that that did make me mad. Yeah. So I was like, well, obviously they don't see the value in me. It's just disrespectful that they would... I bet you they said the no, there's no money, there's no space in our full time yeah. squad. Yeah, this is all we can offer you. Yeah, it's and like and it's not like it's not like they offered you that and then you just went away to the Bulldogs and then got the Bulldogs offer. You would have said to them, "Can you please up that? Yeah, because yeah, this a was bit all more. before. Yeah. yeah, and they would say, "Nah, because I was going to take anything." Hundred percent, and they would have gone, "There's no money, mate. I, yeah, there's you know we wish we but could." They doubled it. Yeah, as soon as I told them that, you know what I mean. And they sit across from the table and they say that to you face to face. Yeah, we wish we could. We wish you could. There's just no money. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they double it. And yeah. You're like, Fuck, it's just disrespectful, bro. Mm. Like, I would rather them say to me, this is how much we think you're worth yep. and we're not going to move. Cool, yeah. All right, okay, sweet. But the lie of like, there's no money, this, that, yep. just like, bro, like, fuck. I think that's one thing you sort of learn mm. as, 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 a, as a player as you get older, eh? Right? Mm. That honesty is honesty is the easiest bro, 100%. way to go about anything. Because it's just like, you at least you respect me, mm. you know? You, yep. you may not rate me the way I rate myself, yep. but at least you respect me enough to go, this is what we think your value is. And, and, and you'd probably be able to back me on this, is that, I found the good coaches were the ones that were honest with you from the Absolutely. start. Regardless yeah. if it was good news or bad news, yeah. you look back on it now and you think, I respect him for that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I remember this one time, like 
So I signed for Leicester State, the Bronco, Bro- the Broncos, and I, this this was after I'd made my debut. Had you know really really good first four games. Yeah. And I was promised a wing spot. Yeah. And I didn't get it. And I literally walked in the office and I said, Wayne, I signed for Les to guarantee wing spot. And he literally just said, Sorry, mate, but you didn't excite me in the trials. But yeah. like, I'm sorry I said that. Yeah. And just him saying that I, first of all, admitting that he said it. Yeah. Second of all, saying it's because I didn't excite him in the trials. Like, okay. Okay. Everything <laughs> else, even though he still kind of fucked me over. Yeah. I just, you know what? That shit happens. And that that one little sentence wiped all the bullshit away. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if he had said to me, oh, I don't remember saying that. Like, or yeah. like, we never promised you the wing spot. Yeah. I would still to this day be like, that's fucking bullshit. Yes, yeah. you did. Yeah. Um, and so for him to just be like, you know, I ended up getting my spot back. Yeah. Which proved that it was true. I just didn't excite him, you know. Like, yeah. You know, so. And, and, and it's, it's kind of like, that's what you want from a player. You, you want black and white. You mm. don't want gray. Yeah. So the fact that you could get clarity out of that situation. Exactly. M- Meant that you knew exactly what you had to do to, yeah, to get back. More there. exciting, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, that and that was probably one thing too that I, I found with um, with with, with Sheenzy at the time too, because obviously I was in year twelve mm. and I wanted to go. Uh, when I was in year twelve, I wanted to go to schoolies. Mm. Couldn't go. He ended up sort of saying, you know, if you want to be a footballer, I, I'd recommend you not go there. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, if you want to give yourself an opportunity to possibly debut, I would, I wouldn't go there. So I did that mm. and. Um, you know, so he didn't guarantee me yeah. a debut, but at the time I sort of felt like I deserved one. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, who knows? I, that's just me being me. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. I'm yes. back in myself type thing. Um, okay, so you go to the doggies. Yeah. So you make your debut 2006. Yeah. Um, who'd you make your debut against again? The Warriors. The Warriors. Yeah. Shit. Can't forget that, bro. Bro, walk us through your debut. <laughs> it was cool, man. It was cool. I, I, um, I didn't get told until the day before captain's run mm. or the day before, yeah, captain's run because then they flew out okay. um, that I was going to debut. Wow. It was, it was, it was all because um, one of the boys stuffed up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Which one was, which boy stuffed up? You don't have to say what he did, but which boy stuffed up? Um, it was Rennie. Rennie. Oh, so you fuck. can imagine, yeah. Yeah, of course um, it was Rennie. Yeah. Ren dog. Yeah, you know, I love you, bro. Thank you, bro. bro. But you gave his that. Bro, I always say Rennie 04, baby. Yeah. So I say Rennie oh, 04, bro. baby. Um, it, it just so happens, you know, one person's fuck up is, an, is another person's opportunity. Yeah, that's absolutely. the way I looked at it and that's the way he looked at it. Mm. Um, and, and the thing that I loved about that is he always wears his mistakes on his, you know, he'll wear it on his... On yeah, his, he'll cop it. Yep. If yep. you fucked up, he, he, he'll, he'll say you fucked up. Mm. Um. And he, you know, and the thing that I loved about it is that he supported me as well. Mm, wasn't he's like, like bro, bitter or hater or like, whatever. He's like, this is your opportunity, yep. you know. I hope you kill it. Yeah. Um, so for me too, because because I hadn't had time to sort of process it, mm. I was like, I was excited, you know. Mm. Um, and I remember rooming with Luke Patton was my first roomie. Oh yeah, um, the general, the general. And uh, before we went to bed, it would have been about ten o'clock, and I was, you know, lights out. He was laying down in bed and I was just laying <laughs> staring at the ceiling and I was like, General. He's like, Yeah. And I was like, Will you never sign your first? <laughs> <laughs> just in the dark lot. Yeah. Yeah, just like, hey bro, sorry to uh, keep you up, but will you never sign your first game too? <laughs> what and say? um bro, he was he was good, man. He yeah. was like, Yeah, like listen, man, like just go there and enjoy yourself, you know. Mm. Um it's good to have nerves. It just means that you're ready, mm. you know, or you 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 expect highly of yourself to do well so mm. um that was the first thing i remember bro is asking him for that a bit of advice um and then as for the game man all i remember is the drums yeah, you know that yeah, yeah so, so 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 running out first and then like hearing the drums play you know mm. Mm. and then you guys coming out the warriors the, at the time coming out from the far end yeah the tunnel yeah, yeah. and i'm like far we're on here this yeah. is this is cool you know it's yeah. on um and i had <clears throat> warangi Kopu. Yep. Warangi Kopu as my back rower. Okay, yeah. And um, I remember he got the ball. He called, he looked at me. He called the ball. And he goes, "Yep, give it." And he ran straight at me, and I tackled him. And as as all young dudes do, you know, you get you're a bit cocky. Yeah. And I was like, "Mate, like, is that all you got?" <laughs> on, your debut, <laughs> on your debut, you said that. On my debut, Shit. I said, "Is that it? Is that all you got?" <laughs> and um, he he ended up saying to me, "He goes, I hope you also, you got some shoulder pads under there, bro, because you're going to need them." <laughs> And I didn't really, it didn't really click to me what he was talking about. Okay. Like for the whole game, just, he was just running straight at me. And I, I think after about three times, I was like, 
Okay, bro. You, 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 you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm just gonna, yeah, <laughs> just make my tackles. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, but we won it, bro. We won yeah. the game. How so I was, that? I was pretty pumped about that. Yep. Uh, but then just to play against guys like that, bro. Mm. Like, like um, who was there at the time? Um, was Stacy still playing then or no? Nah, he he had just left. You know who was gun at the time there, bro? Uh, Brent Webb. Yeah. Like, bro. He was a gun. I was like, he was. Yeah, I, I admired him. Yeah. By the way, he 100%. played. Like, a guy that you couldn't sort of take your eye off, eh? A hundred percent. This way he moved across the field, he reminded me a little bit. Not like I'm bigger. Like I thought, Matty Bowen was better, but he had those kind of traits that just that feel for just the game. Up. Yeah, yeah. Could, could could get a yeah, could understand where the breaks were and stuff like that. Um, Steve Price was there at the time too. Ruben Wiki. Yeah, Ruben Wiki. What yeah. was that like playing him? He's a legend, man. Torture, bro, because kickoffs too. Like oh. they kept kicking my way. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember. I remember we played one game against the Warriors and they kept kicking to him. <laughs> And he kept singling me out every time. Oh, and you know bro. what? Because you're young too, you don't want to say, nah, kick the other way. Yeah, yeah no, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, okay. it's like, I say, I remember that whole game. We just, um, oh, every time we had to kick off, mm. it was just chest on, boom, Boosh. chest on, boom. Boosh. Yeah. And it's just like, just hang on and hopefully come to someone. You don't want to tell you, the boys, like, hey, can you like kick the other yeah. way, please? And I'm pretty sure I even like had Willie Tonga outside me. Yep. So I'd be like, Will, like, can you? <laughs> D up for one tackle <laughs> and he would do it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. But then and thankfully he did that to me because he he'd go, nah, you know what? You need to learn. You need to aim up. Yeah, like, yeah, hundred percent. All right. Yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> shit, okay. Yeah, Your knees yeah. are shaking. <laughs> yeah. So so I I suppose that's where my whole mentality too as a half, because they did that stuff to you, they mm. singled you out all the time. Mm. You had to tackle. So yeah. so for me, I, I prided myself in defense as well. Mm. As I got as I the years came on, mm. you know, I took I took I tried to take my strengths to my defense as well as mm. my attack. Yeah, because it, it, like, it's one of those things where like, technically, yes, the halves are smaller on the field. So like, you could look at it and be like, yeah, maybe he shouldn't be defending there. But most coaches would be like, nah, that's just part of your job. Yeah. You just have to learn yep. to sort it out. That's your job. Um, it's, it's, um, it sucks though, because fuck, getting targeted all day by back rolls. Yeah, oh man. my God. <laughs> Stuff and nightmares. Stuff and nightmares. So, you know, what was interesting, like if I recall correctly, um, you coming through like you did explode onto the scene like there was a lot of raps around you there was mm. like a lot of hype around you um so you debuted for new zealand mm -hmm. um in the, your second year of first grade so i did the first year okay. so it was wow. a one-off test yep. yeah so i'd wow. only played six games far out at the time yeah the first grade and um brian mclennan was the the coach at the time mm. um and they had a, a one-off test over in great britain mm-hmm so how good's that good yeah to go so i was like Fuck, how cool is this and, mm. and then i told you that story about me breaking down yep. after a week because yeah. that was it so i was only there for two weeks do you remember the phone call like is he not the breakdown for the phone call that you got selected um you know what I, I think i got a phone call from my manager first okay um and he was like are you where you pledge your allegiance because mm. i'm uh, yeah, yeah. i'm australian yeah Samo you know well. um, so i'm on background yeah and i was like um, oh sugar like I've got to think about this so mm. um, had a chat with my parents and that obviously and um, I picked New Zealand yeah okay you know um, I wanted to represent them yeah um, which which I'm grateful for mm. um, but some, some a bit of me kind of wishes that I had gone the other way or gone Australia yeah because like I've never told anyone that yeah I really never told anyone that yeah. because I grew up here yeah um and and now, like I said, as you get older, you sort of start to think differently. So, mm. you know, I, I did it for them, mm. but I th it, like it would have been cool to play for. The, had the opportunity to play for. Yeah, make yourself eligible. New South Wales and Australia. Just yeah. you never know. It's so tough, bro. You know, it's such yeah. a tough. I mean, I've never been in that position, but yeah. like when your parents cut, like I remember when I started playing rugby league, my dad loved AFL. Yeah. And like, I had no interest in playing AFL. But yep. anyway, AFL found out about a guy that could, I've told this story heaps on the podcast, found out about a guy that could switch sports, soccer, rugby league. I took the meeting with the Brisbane Lions yep. just because my dad loved AFL. Yeah, okay. And so what I'm trying to say is, is that like, you know, your parents are Kiwis. You just want to make them happy and yeah, proud. Yeah. You just want to represent them. Yep. But you've also got yourself where you're like, you grew up in Australia. Like yeah. you're just as Australian as anyone else that's Australian, you yeah. know? And, and, and in saying that, I think they're going to be proud of you no matter what. Yeah, You so know true. what I mean? That's, you don't think like that when you're no, younger. Though. You no, just that's, think, that's, yeah. what, that's what I mean. So mm. as you get older, you look back and, and that's probably why I sort of think maybe I should have done that. Mm. Um, mm. But, you know, 
I've chosen my path yeah. now, and then I've, I've gone on and represented New Zealand. You still got to put on that famous black and white jersey, yeah, though, bro. Yeah, and it was cool, man. Yeah. It was cool. And I think, like you said, I, it all happened so quick for me. I, yeah. I took it for granted. Seven games, bro. I, 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 I didn't take it for granted. I just didn't appreciate it. Mm. You get when caught it was up there. in everything. Yeah. You're just like, you, you're, it's your first year, so you're not even thinking. It's just everything's just happening. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, how cool is this, you know? Mm. And, yep. and you know what it's like being a first grader, too. It's that. It's the element outside of the game, mm. you know. People asking you for autographs, mm. and, yeah. And and um, but looking back now, it's it's not real, bro. That's not real life. Yeah, it's not real. It's life. not real life. It's man. a bubble, bro. It's it's a bubble, and mm. and for me now, and what I want to do for athletes, like any athlete, but mm. especially rugby league boys, mm. is make them aware of that. Yeah, because I think it's important, man. Because that's probably one of the biggest struggles with us when we finish playing mm. is coming to terms with wow like because once once you finish playing then you're irrelevant yeah you to just, the game you're a normal person you know and and and, and the, i suppose because i've been through it and you have as well it's like only we can sort of tell them but whether they take that on board is yeah thing, absolutely you know I mean? when other people try to say to a young footy player oh this is the downfalls it's like you're not going to listen Whereas like there's a chance that you might listen if an yep. ex player says, "Bro, like I know how you're feeling right now because yep. I've been there." Mm. But I promise you, once you quit, you've, you've got to sort yourself out before you quit. Yeah. Because if you don't, there's going to be a big hole in a vacuum. Yep. You're going to be trying to fill, and you're not going to know how to fill it. Yeah. Um, and also, you've got to understand that you're a human being. You're not just a rugby league player. Hundred percent. You know, like whereas it's oh, an identity it, thing. Bro, hundred percent. Like if you're not a rugby league player, what are you? That's what I thought. Yeah, when I was like, 100%. what am I? What's the purpose of yeah, me? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a professional sportsman. Like, yeah. Um. So it is real hard coming to terms with that. Um. So yeah. Anyway, the next year you make the Kiwi side again. Yep. Anzac Test. Yep. Played against Australia. I didn't end up playing. Okay. Oh no, sorry. I did in that one. Yes, I did. Yeah, okay. Sorry. At um, that was at um, Suncorp. It was a how? What Bro, was that like? Ah, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Um. The atmosphere was crazy because yeah. obviously Suncorp, bro, you'd know so more than good. anyone, yeah. better than anyone. Like full packed house, man. It's the best. You can't hear anything. No, nah, it's literally heaven, mate. So, yeah, that was a that was a gun experience again. Mm. Um, and then was it 2008 was the centenary test? Yeah, I made the I made the team for that, and I was supposed to wow. start in that game. Yeah, um, I tore my hamstring in the captain's run. Oh shit! So um, I got through the captain run fine, mm. and I went to go practice doing some kickoffs. After oh, the, after my training, God, yeah, Fuck. ping, I'm just going, oh. Uh -oh. and you first tell yourself, oh no no, it's yeah, I thought no no, nah, nah, nah. that must be just tight, yeah, yeah, tight tight, you know. But knowing what I know now, I did I did my hamstring and I did it good. Like I was yeah. never going to play, but I I had this hope <laughs> that I'd be able to play. So I went and seen them, the coach, it in. Steve Kearney, straight away, and I was like, man, I, I think I've done something to my hemi. So I went and seen the physio. He's like, yeah, go see the physio. I think he knew I'd done it. Yeah, but. I didn't know I'd done it. I was yeah. like, it's all right, eh? I just sort of ice it. <laughs> there, that rice, I just ice it's it. It's all right, eh? Yeah, just compress. Like, yeah, yeah, and, he, and he was like, like he didn't even answer me, but he was talking to Mooks yeah. at the time and yeah. obviously they knew I was gone. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'd stay, I stayed up till two o'clock yeah, icing, compressing, icing, icing, icing get compressing, <laughs> thinking I'm going to give myself every chance. Woke up in the morning, I said, it's still sore, eh? And they go, yeah, mate, I think you've done something. <laughs> you've, you've actually so torn your hamstring. I'm just going, ah, oh, frick, you yeah. know, so I missed out. Wow. And that, that, that was that was my last opportunity to play for the Kiwis. Wow. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, at the time you thought you might be get, get back there yeah. or whatever. Um, because then, obviously, World Cup come around that year as well, followed that same year. Yep. The World Cup and Samoa had a team. Yep. So, um, Mooks rang me in the preseason. Mm-hmm. Or just before the, the, the when they were picking the squads, yeah, and he said to me, "Listen, mate, I don't think we're going to go with you in the World Cup. I'm just letting you know. So, mm. if the opportunity comes to go to Samoa, you can you can go there. Yeah. Um, and I said, "Sweet, no worries. Thank you for telling me. Mm. You know, I was I was gutted, but at the same time, the respect. I was like, bro, honesty. thank you. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, puts now I know where I stand. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Um, so I played World Cup 08 Samoa. to Samoa, and looking back on it now it's probably the best decision i made anyways like mm. i felt like it connected me with my roots in mm. terms of with with my culture absolutely my, my um, ancestors mm. and i learned a lot every time i played for tour samoa you know i learned more about my culture and my yeah. ancestors and 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 i suppose how my grandparents lived and made me appreciate Crazy, what they've bro. done and how they left the island for us to get ahead yeah 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 to get you know well i, th I think as well like the those camps are really good especially for the 
this your generation or my generation mm. because when we grew up we didn't have the internet to teach us these things about our heritage it was kind of just like whatever you learnt you learnt yep. maybe from your parents but you know they're living their own life too like they don't have time to sit you down and you know run you through your, your whole history they yep. might say stories about your grandparents yep. but I assume again I'm only assuming to actually go there or yeah. and feel it mm. and be like, wow, this is my blood, like you know. And and then that's the thing, bro. Like you you you, you do connect with your, mm. you know, you, you connect with your spirit and stuff like that. And that's obviously growing up in Australia. I'm like, oh, spirit. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. yeah. Ancestors. Yeah. You know, and and obviously, um, some all being a very, um, you know, they 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 believe highly in spirits and mm. and that sort of stuff. So. For me to learn that side of, of them was 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 pretty cool. Yeah, um, it's probably not something that I would implement in my everyday life. Or, yeah, yeah. But just to see history matters, bro. Yeah, just to see where my grandparents grew up and the house they grew up mm. in, and and my great grandparents' graves and mm. like that sort of stuff like that. Yeah, I'm grateful I got to see all that stuff. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There's like even me, like you know, thinking of my grandparents fighting in the war and all that kind of stuff. It makes you appreciate like. Yep. You know, I'm not sure, like, you know, I know Samoa and Tonga had a lot of issues. I'm not sure mm. if your grandparents hadn't, you know, had any involvement in when whatever happened with that. Mm -hmm. But to think of the stuff they went through for me to have these opportunities, yep. crazy, bro, yep. like crazy. And, and, and that's the thing, bro. So I think, so like I said to you, every time I've played, I represented Samoa, I always learned something new. Like, and mm. that's what I, I, I love. Yeah. I'd be excited to get into camp because yeah. what's new? What am I going to learn? Yeah, gonna what are going to learn here? Um, and I found... The more I learned, so when I first played for Samoa, it was just the national anthem didn't mean much to me. Yeah. So I just sang it. Yeah. Because I'm there to play a game of footy. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Um, but then when once you start to learn, you know your culture and your mm. background and your family's ancestor story. Yeah. It becomes more of an emotional thing. Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. So that's what I really loved, man, about representing Samoa because mm. I knew how much it meant to them. You know what's crazy is like, when you're younger, all this stuff you're like history heritage yeah bro fuck whatever yeah i'm just here to fucking play footy yeah and then the older boys always tell you bro gotta connect yeah you gotta connect. yeah and you're like man whatever yeah and then as you get older all the cliches you were told yep. you're like they were right yeah they yeah. were fucking right 100 100 <laughs> and, and i suppose a good thing for me too bro so my first roomie was nigel vangana oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. so he he played a big part he in me gun. growing as a person a player, not bro. only as a footy player yeah. but as a person yeah um post that world cup so from mm. oh wait so you know he, anything that had anything to do with our our, our island our people mm. i wanted to get involved with it and mm. he would always get me involved with it and i, I loved it you mm. know what i mean um so I, like i said that's there was always just something where i was able to learn something new or mm. you know um discover something about myself yeah that i didn't realize so cool bro yeah so cool i, I gotta ask you this a few people have spoken about it a little bit rennie has luke Patton. Obviously, the Sonny Bill Williams, you know, leaving in that. Mm -hmm. So, like, Luke Patton, and again, this is not putting words in his mouth, but, like, Luke Patton was on the side of, like, you know, you boys, you and Rennie and Willie and, and Sonny were tight. Yeah. So, your, your bias, for a better, you know, word, yep. was, like, he's our boy. And at the end of the day, him being our boy is, is more important than whatever a club yep. is or whatever. And then mm -hmm. Luke Patton was on the side of, like, he's a gun. Yeah. You know, we understand, we love him, but we also felt a bit like, damn, that happened. Yeah. You know, what was it like for you personally? Because, like, you're in this hard spot of, as you said, that's your boy. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, everything that happened was so dramatic. Like, it was honestly the most dramatic controversy I've fucking ever seen. Mm, yeah. hundred. Well, bros, yeah. Like you said, a big superstar has just been lost to the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me personally, man, um, so we were gutted that he was leaving mm. 100% yeah. I don't think anyone would be gutted that oh, he's leaving your 100%. team I was gutted <laughs> he was leaving your team leaving. or your club <laughs> was, no, you know what I was stoked yeah. I don't have to get shot at by <laughs> him anymore <laughs> um, bro so um, we, were, we were we were gutted in that way bro um, as for him having an opportunity to fulfill his dream mm. we were we yeah. were supporting him 100% you know what I mean um and at the time, I can understand what, what everyone was thinking. Mm. But at the same time now, I hope that they can see what he was thinking. Mm. And you're right. It, it was probably done in a fashion that probably wasn't ideal mm. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'm sure if he could do it another way, that was a lot better. He probably would have. That's yeah. just me thinking. He yeah, may yeah. not have. He probably happy with the way he did. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think at, at, the, at the point in time, it was the only way it could be done. Mm. Okay. 
that's that's just what yeah. I'm thinking. Well, it's easy in hindsight to look back and be like, you should have changed this, you should have changed that. Yeah, that's right. That's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. in hindsight, mm. um, but at that point of time, I think that was the only way he could do yeah. it. Well, everyone that I've spoken to, whatever, like, again, there was no sides, but you understand what I'm saying when you've yep. got your core group of mates and then you've got the footy boys yep. that want him to stay because they, they love him too, but, yep. you know, not as the same as you. Yeah. Everyone I've spoken to has, has always said, you know, at the end of the day, he did the right thing. Like, you know, when yep. you look, when you, when we look back at history and everything he's done for the game, yep. like, fuck. Yeah. It's, it was the right and, thing. And, and you know what? Like, I honestly don't think it was to hurt anyone's feelings. Mm. I think it was to, for him to achieve what he wanted to achieve and that's mm. to become the best athlete possibly mm. in the world, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... Um, well, he's up there, you know. Look, like, what, look at what he's achieved. Absolutely. Like, not many sportsmen can no. say they've achieved the highest honour in terms of playing-wise in different codes, well, let and, alone one. Absolutely. Like, you look at any NRL player that, you know... Let's say Sonny stays in NRL. You know... He probably wouldn't achieve what Cameron Smith would achieve. Mm -hmm. But because he left, you could argue he's actually achieved more than yep. Cameron Smith's yep. achieved. Mm. Um, again, I understand they're different sports where I are, but uh, it gives him the possibility. E e even even, even the, the person he is today, you know, the, I suppose the, um, you know, just the status that he's got. Yeah. I don't think he would have had that status no, no if he'd stayed in an No way, no way. And, and I think that's, that's why it's amazing with what he's done, bro. Like, mm. like I'm sure if you had said when he was there, Sonny's going to go win two World Cups in Rugby Bruh, Union. Crazy. Box as yeah. well. Box, win, he's light heavyweight champion, New yeah. Zealand light heavyweight champion. Yeah. Come back and win a premiership with the Roosters. <laughs> crazy. And then go back and play Rugby Union again. Yeah. And he, he won a sevens cup, cup, didn't he? Or did he kill his Achilles? He went to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went like, to the Olympics. If, if he went to, so he's crazy. an Olympian. Yeah. If you had said that he's going to go, he's leaving now to go and achieve all this, yeah, you would have laughed, mate. One hundred percent. You would have yeah. said, you know what? You also would have said, NRL players don't really do that. Yeah, you know, he's the first guy well, to really do that's that. That's exactly yeah. right. So yeah. he he's pretty much opened up everyone's eyes. Mm. You know, like in terms of what I suppose to number one, look at yourself as a business. Yeah, absolutely. Do what's best for you. Yeah. Right, and number two. Like the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, like for, for him to go and do that as yeah. just open, like you said, has opened up a can of worms now for any other kid that wants. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go test myself and go play rugby. Union. I can do it. He's done it. Well, I can do it. Look at Kalen. Exactly. Like I don't. I can't. You know. I hope he stays in the game. Yeah. But would he be a bit crazy to stay in the game if he could go play for the All Blacks? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you know? like he, he he and Sonny was re like you got Brad Thorne that kind of did that, but uh, well did do it. Yeah, but Brad Thorne wasn't the mega star that no. Sonny is. You but, know? but you know what? See, he he doesn't even get enough. Yeah, um, oh, he's one of the accurate. greatest athletes. Fucking Mate. period. Yeah, but 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 he was more successful in rugby union than what Sonny was. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you eh? know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and plus people forget how good of a league player he yeah. was. Anyone state of origin too? Yeah. yeah, and and he played for it. Bro, yeah, he, he's crazy. done it all as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, so for him, man. I, like. He doesn't get enough accolade yeah. for what he, he yeah, did. Yeah, he too. was incredible. But yeah, no. But then like, you look at Sonny, he's done boxing. He's done sevens. Bruh, it's you know, a joke. He, he's done pretty much every oval ball game yeah. except for AFL. Yeah, and he would kill it at that point. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've seen him kick it. <laughs> <laughs> joking, bro. Just, I'm only joking. Just, just start bagging him. Yeah. Like, you've won all these World Cups and then just be like, yeah, but he's shit at AFL. Yeah. So fuck, <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> That's um, hater -ish. <laughs> Yeah, one of those. You know those guys that like they pretend to give the compliment, but then that comes with yeah. a little, and you're like, gonna, oh, you're a humble, hater, bro. Bro. Stay humble, bro. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, yeah, and I again, I think a key factor here is, bro, he was like 21. Like, yeah, yeah. If if you do have anything negative to say, it gets erased by that fact. He's yeah. 21 years old. Mm. Um, but I think most people, he's basically, he's like, you know, the results are there. Yeah, you know, I did what I set out to achieve. Yeah. Um, and change the game forever. There are so many young kids that, bro, I'm Sonny Bill, I'm Sonny Bill. Yeah. Kind of like Benji, yeah. man. Yeah. You know? um, I, I like to think those two probably other icons for yeah. Polynesian kids. Oh, man. You'd, you'd think back, a back and a forward. Oh, bro. Like you, you're either doing Benji Marshall step or yep. you're doing Sonny Bill offload. Well, my theory is, and I've said it a few times on this podcast, I actually think that although I don't think Benji is a goat, like mm. he's, he's, don't get me wrong, he's one of the greats, yep. but he's not the goat. Yeah. But I do believe that he actually impacted the game more 100%. than any player in yep. the history of the game. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Because like no one goes, 
even like Joey, for example, I think Joey, like Joey and Lockie for me, interchangeable goats. Probably Lockie because I play with him, yep. so I'm biased. Um, but no one goes like, throw a Joey cutout pass. Yep. But every kid says, yep. Benji Marshall step, yeah. like Benji Marshall flick. And before Benji came in, everyone believed that touch players couldn't play rugby league yeah. because it were, they, they, they couldn't, if getting tackled, the line speed, um, the different, sh- the way the game flowed. Yep. Whereas Benji changed all that. Yeah. Now Sean Johnson exists. Now uh, Caelan Ponger exists. Yeah. You know, all these guys, Sam Walker coming through now. Yep. All these guys, Benji Marshall was the man. Yeah. Well, you, you think about it before Benji, who had a step? Yeah. Brad Fittler, left yeah. foot. But it wasn't like I, I explained it to like, put it this way Benji packaged it up in, I'm intentionally trying to make you go away. Yeah, and I'm yeah, not yeah. Going. Whereas Brad Fittler was more like, I'm going to step so hard off this foot yep. that you're not going to be able to recover from but it. But I'm pretty enough. sure he did it with one foot as well. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. You know Whereas I mean? Benji was fucking doing all Both weeds. feet. Yeah. Bruh, you go I'm pretty sure. Like. He's, so who did he debut? Was it Canberra? I'm not sure, but it was fucking. But, bro, like when he first threw it out there, I think everyone. Well, I'm not joking because I went and watched it. Was that, I'm pretty sure it was at Campbell's House Stadium. Yeah, okay. And I went and watched it and like everyone was like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck was just, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And then he's just done it again. Boom, uh, whoa, boom, again, whoa. But pretty, is, <laughs> the try against the Sharks that he set up, do you remember yeah, that try? Yeah, Where yeah. it was just like, yep. goose fucking, yep. another goose, fuck, and then, and no, no looker. looker. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Taking the piss. Yeah. Iconic that one. Um, yeah, he, he was incredible. Okay, so so the next year rolls around and, but you, I mean, you stayed, you, you stayed until 2011 at the Dogs? Yep. It was my last year, yeah. And so what made you leave with the to the Eels? Okay, so um, I had, um, so what was it? As you'd know, and some may knows, I was a bit of a rat bag when I first started, when yeah, I come okay. on the scene, eh? Yeah, I've got, there's one thing I was going to ask you and you kind of skimmed past it. So I was like, you know, well, he probably doesn't want to talk about it. The no, Wollongong Glass House or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> man. But, you know, that was just one of the incidents that got that got put up. But I I got in a fair bit of trouble, man. Okay. Um, I'm not proud about it, but... Mm. I honestly believe that it shaped me for the person who I am today. Okay, okay um, I got in a bit of trouble, and 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 it, it stemmed back to the alcohol. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'm telling it straight how it is. Yeah. And it's why I don't drink anymore, and I haven't for a while. Okay. Um, alcohol is not for everyone. Okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, alcohol is not for me in terms of. Um, it, it didn't make me angry or anything, but it just. I had probably just a. A shorter temper than what I normally would. Okay, so like you weren't sense? angry, but if something ticked you off, you it would go quicker. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and like we just mentioned, that incident down there. Um, so what was it? It's alleged alleged um, assault or whatever. What you fought a bloke or some something like that. Yeah. Or? So it's a pretty shit story, man. I um, I think a girl asked me for a photo or something like that, mm. and I, I, I said yes, and I sort of turned around because I was with all my schoolmates at the time. Yeah. Okay. Turned around and sort of had the photo and. Um, she wanted. She wouldn't take it. She wanted me to stand up. She's like, "Can you stand up?" And I was yeah. like, "Oh, I'm just with my mates." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know what? If I'd stood up, none of it would have happened. Yeah. That's, yeah. So you know, in hindsight. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side of that, you don't owe her to stand up as well. Well, well that's fair, that's fair. yeah. So um, that happened, and she ended up spraying me, or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, whatever." Yeah. Like, you know. Um, and then a, her boyfriend came and. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, been much or whatever. Yeah. So we had a little push and shove, and one thing led to another. Um. And then I actually ended up having words with the bouncer. Yeah, okay. So now you have <laughs> so, snapped so, now. You've... So because yeah, he knew the bouncers, okay. so I started exchanging words with the bouncers. Mm. Um, and then one thing led to another. I walked outside with the bouncers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then I got king hit. Oh, what by the bouncer? Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, you know, it's scary because I, I woke up and I was like, "What's going on here?" Yeah. So as in he kinging it from the side so or? I got, I got, yeah. So. Uh, I, Shit story. Uh, he led me down a, an alley and, and I got st- like side, side swiped by someone else, by oh, another guy. Um, but then I sort of come to and I was like, oh, that, what happened? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the people around me were like, oh, those those bounce over there. Yeah. Like, king it. King, yeah, dog shot you. I took you down, dog shot you. So yeah. then I'd, I'd, us being us, you know, yeah, yeah. wipe my mouth. Let's, let's fucking go then. So I walked back around, lined up, tried to go back in. Yeah. And, um, then I got to him and just tried to scrap him. He just tried to scrap him. <laughs> I didn't want to go in. I didn't as, want to go in. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I hate that place. <laughs> um, and but, so, and he had the audacity to go. Then he went to the cops and he got no, shot. So the, it, it, mate, because I was so blind and out of it, they, okay. were, they were there. Oh, cops okay. were there. Okay. And so I, that's why I didn't know that. In the alleyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so they were there um, when I was obviously. Because they'd say, come over here, mate. Like, because they've seen blood and whatever. Yeah. Then they were trying to arrest me. 
Um, Fucking hell, man. And at that time, I just... And it, it wasn't assault. I literally... Yeah, like nothing. But they want to ping you for anything. Yeah. yeah. And it got to a point where they couldn't handcuff me because I wouldn't let her. Yeah, wow. Okay. So that's when you so were then just they, like, I just said, where do you want me to go? Just tell me and I'll... Yeah, I'll go there. So they just threw me in there. That's end of story. Yeah. And you know what media is like. Yeah. They well, hold of it. Mate, that's they a of it and they just blow it up. Because the weird thing is, it's like, yeah, of course, the older you could have avoided that situation. But at the same time, like any normal bloke, if that real story, you're the fucking victim here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. But you're forced to be in a position of like, yeah, I probably should have walked away or yeah. whatever. But it's like, well, hang on a sec. Like you, the chick was angry that you wouldn't take a photo. Yeah. You don't owe her a photo. You're with your mates. Yeah. B, the guy came and staunched you. Yeah. C, the other bouncer took you outside, dog shot at you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like dog shot at you. That's fucked, bro. And so you got charged with assault for that? So I got, I got done, yeah. So I had to go to court. And I thought, no, I've got a case here. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's, it's sweet. Um, no, nah, I lost it. Fucking hell. So I, got, I, got, I got done with a fair bit, bro. And it, it, it sounded worse than what it, what it really was. What it really was. Fuck um, I had I had like three or four. I think I got charged for three or four different things, eh? Well, three like refusing to move on. Refusing, fucking. yeah, refusing arrest, assaulting police officer. Oh, my God. Um, and you just the public, you know, just, just petty stuff. Yeah, just, just dumb shit. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't the only thing, bro. Like, yeah, that okay. was just, I think that was the the line in the sand for me. Okay, so um, that's when you realise, fuck, I've got to not drink alcohol here. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, it hasn't done any good for me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um so I, I went pretty much cold turkey for two years, eh? So how good's that? From two thousand seven, yes, yeah, so I went eight, nine. Mm. No, sorry, nine, nine and ten. Okay, I went end of eight. Yeah, all nine. That's halfway through ten, yeah. Yep. Um, met my missus. Yeah, two thousand and ten. It's crazy how your yeah, life just, gets better when you yeah. start making right decisions. Yeah, you yeah. meet people that are better for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then from there, yeah, the rest is history. From there, so then. 2009 was probably one of my best years I'd played yep. too. Okay. Um, for for Canterbury, um, seven and eight weren't too bad, but I found that as my they were my established years. Okay. Nine was probably my proper good year. Okay. 2010, I I ended up getting injured for half the season because yeah, I done my syndesmosis. Yep. Yep. Um, and then that year they'd signed um, Chris Keating, another guy. Okay. So so it was it was us battling. Okay. Yep. For a spot, um, and then obviously they they went with him, mm. and then I got, I moved on to the Parramatta Eels. To Parramatta Eels, yeah. I could be. Am I recalling it correctly that you did have a lot of hype around you in those early years? Is that mm. is that correct? Um, I know it's like hard for you to say. Yeah, right, like I I think so. There was a lot of expectation. How um, did you did you? What's it, you know, explain to people that listen, like, what's it like to have that huge... Because as you said, you, you kind of, as we said before we started the podcast, you kind of feel like if you had to be mentally stronger, you could have had a much better career. Yeah, um, I, I, I think, yeah, if I was more mature. Okay. More mature. Mm. More mature as a person, but then even more mature just, just thinking-wise, I think. Like, okay. Um, I think... Because one, I'd probably appreciate it more. Because like yeah. I said to you, a lot of things happened for me quick at the start. Absolutely. And because of that, I don't think I appreciated it as much. Yeah. Um, so I definitely probably would have appreciated more. Mm. Um, and then being more present. You know, if I appreciate it more, yeah. I'm more present so in, true, in, in bro. time. And then also, I, 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 what's the word? I sort of um, give my all type more things. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Instead of being kind of like, you just rock up, you get told what to do. Yeah. If you're appreciating it more and you're present, you're like, okay, this is why I'm doing it. You're willing to learn more yeah, and, and improve more. Yeah, totally um, true. And, that, and that's probably something that you learn along the way as well. Uh, I'm the same, man. If I could take my mindset to when I was 18, yep. I'd be such a better player. It's a joke. Yep. Like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure we don't have regrets. Yeah, yeah. But in hindsight, it, it could have been a lot better. I have, reg- I have one regret and we were playing the dogs 2008 and I saw Sonny Bill... And I thought, I'm going to run straight here just to see what it feels like. <laughs> and I stepped at the last second. <laughs> and he called me a cat after it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you regret? Not running into him? Yeah, I, like, I would have just, then I could say, like, I yeah, got true. shot up by Sonny Bill. How good's that? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, nah. you, you, trust me, everyone would have done the same thing. <laughs> he called me a cat too. Did he? he? Yeah, yeah, it was so fucking funny. And I was a cat because I did step. <laughs> I would have been like, bro, I'm just smart. Bro, you shot me and then we'll do fitness. Let's yeah. see who wins. <laughs> no, no, joking, joking. I'm joking. I'm not comparing myself to Sonny Bill yeah. guys. Don't worry. <laughs> um, um, so, okay, so you go to the, the Eels. Yep. Um, and what was that like there those few years? 
Um, bro, it was very challenging. Yeah, okay. I feel like um, very challenging mentally. You know, you, you hear about the term the footy roller coaster. Oh, bro. Yeah, so that was definitely a roller coaster. Mm, okay. Um, not only for me personally, I'm pretty sure it was for the club, for the team. Mm. You know, a lot went on, man. Like, I signed there, um, you know, as, as players, you always want the best. So you want to win a comp. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so for me, it was going there with a mentality because I, I think they had struggled the, the couple of years before that. Yep. And it was to go there and turn the club around. Okay. So they'd signed myself and Chris, uh, Chris Sandow. Chrissy Sandow. Yeah. <laughs> Chrissy Sandow. <coughs> oh, sorry, mate. Uh, Willie Tonga. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I was like, yeah, because I, like, I felt like my game had matured at the time too. Okay. So I was like, I was pretty confident in my ability and what I could do to mm. help turn this team around. Yeah. But also it was, it was Willie Tonga, was, I was going to be back with Will. Yeah, yeah. I was going to be back with Was Ren. Ren there as well? Yeah, Ren yeah, was already yeah. there. So I actually mm. spoke to Ren before I went signed because it was okay. either there or Cronulla at the time. All right, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so I think the fact because we had a good core playing group, mm. um, it's what got got us through it. You mm, know, okay. like because it was pretty tough, man. Challenging yep. wise, I'm pretty yeah, sure okay. we had we got wooden spoon both years. Oh, I know. Um, you know, play coaches were getting sacked, players were getting dropped. Wow, players were leaving. It was it was a challenging year, man. And so was it 13, 14? Yep. yep. No, twelve and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen. Yep. Okay. Twelve and thirteen. Mm. Um, because for me, because I, I went there, because Mooks was there, Steve yeah, Kearney yeah, was yeah, there, yeah. so so he yeah. got me to go there. So but then he got the sack. Yeah. Wow. That like, sucks. You know what's going to happen here? So he yeah. got the sack. Brad Arthur took over. Yep. Who's now the head coach there? Yep. Good dude, man. Really good coach. Yeah, I've heard awesome that. Coach. I've heard that he's a really good people's person as well. Yeah, Cares about the good. boys a lot. Yep. Um. And so he finished the year off as coach, and I'm pretty sure we won five of our last six games. Oh, really? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah, okay. Stupid. Like it was pretty good. Yep. Um, and they ended up signing Ricky Stewart. Okay. So we all thought, oh yeah, BA's going to get the job mm. done well, but then they signed Ricky Stewart. Okay. Um, and didn't he literally like clean the club out? Like got rid of. Literally clean. Literally, yeah, yeah. It was um, it was crazy, bro. Like what was that, that like? Because that's I've never heard anything. It was like what was it, twenty players out of the thirty or some shit like that that they. Bro, it, was, it was some ridiculous number. I don't know exactly mm. how many. Um, but yeah, that, that that was a bit of a wake up call as well. Yeah. So for as 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 a player, you know, that's that's probably one thing that I I, I definitely want to make um, conscious of to a lot of the young guys playing. Like, it's a roller coaster, mm. and only the the strongest survive. Mm. Yeah, like you're gonna have them, but. It's like it's a part of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Very rarely, it's a very small percentage of players who can get through their career, and and you'd know this, and mm. and be and be sweet. Oh, 100%. you know what I mean? Like totally. they're at the top of their game, but if mm. they're not, they're still sweet. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's very yeah. small percentage. So oh, I, but... I'm talking about blokes like Cameron Smith. And, yeah, yeah, the best, the best, because you know, the best, the best get taken care of the most. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's like it. the club cares. Like you know, fuck whatever we can do for you. Whereas if you're a guy that's not the best of the best, yeah, as soon as you're not playing well, see ya or. Yep. Sit in reserve grade or go do twenty million shit promos because we want you to leave, like, yep. you know all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's that's what it was like for everyone, but yeah. everyone, like Man. no no one knew where they stood. The vibe that. would have been so down. It was so like, everyone was just on their toes. Bro. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty scary. Walking around eggshells and yeah, that. yeah. Like they're just constant like looking around. Have Who's you heard anything? Some, yeah. And what's going on? Like yeah. none of us knew. Yeah, we knew wow. just as much as everyone else. Yeah. And so what that that's what led to going to Castleford Tigers? No, I went to Melbourne. So I went, Me- to, I went Mel- to Melbourne. Yeah, so... How'd that come about? I was actually going to Japan Rugby. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I'd said to my manager, I said, mate, I've okay. had enough rugby yeah, league. fuck this. Yeah, yeah. like get, get me out get of here. Get me out of here. Like, mm. And to be honest with you, I tried to leave probably uh, halfway might have been through... Mm. That second year when, when Sticky was there. Yeah, okay. I tried to leave then. Um, you know, I asked Sticky, you know, and and he ended up, he said to me, nah, man, like you're in our plans for next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Moving forward, this and yeah. that. I said, all right, sweet. Um, he's like, look, um, but you know, you can make a decision at the end of the year. I said, all right, no worries. Um, mm. A couple of weeks later. I got the sack. <laughs> the whiteboard's up oh. there. <laughs> what? Yeah. So there was a whiteboard with everyone leaving? Yeah. So, bro, yeah, it wasn't like um, it wasn't a. So it wasn't even a whiteboard. It was like a projector. So, like, bro, that's this is how bad it was, bro. So we 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 go into a meeting and it was like, what's this about? What? So we're sitting there and then be talking. All right, moving forward, you know. I can't remember the exact conversation, but mm. it was along the lines of, 
uh, moving forward as a club, we, we need to set some some rules, some mm. standards, and we need to change. Mm. This, you know, if your name's up here, then you're free to... Yeah, bro. Whoa. Yes, and... In front of everyone. So it was, it was out in front of everyone. Coaches and staff, players. Holy, and how many people was like, what, 15 on the list or... Yeah, I reckon, minimum. Wow. Yeah, bro, so... Um, so yeah, that, that was a bit... Ex- a bit of a so what was it like vibe for, for like me in the for room? me so for me it was all right because That's i knew what? i was going anyway okay. i was like oh my name's up there yeah no worries this was after he told me anyways the, you're, you're, you're in the plans s- yeah you're in the plans future, but then two anyways, weeks later but, yeah <laughs> but I, I knew um so um but for some of the other guys man like they this was their know. livelihood you know wow. like and some of them were shocked and some of the to be honest with you some of the guys that were up there you would have been like oh whoa like really out of respect for them Who's been there? Oh, they've been there for a while. For a while, yeah. And, okay. You know, like do it privately if yeah, you're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. and so there was a lot of um, a lot of negative vibes around the the place. So just handled poorly. So, yeah. You can speak to people individually if you want. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just be like, sorry, mate, you're moving on, or whatever. And like I said, for me, I was fine. Like mm. I, I I I didn't care because I yeah. wasn't planning on it. But um, that it was the principle. Yeah, I think it was the way that was done about it. Yeah, but yeah. Each to their own, man. I think that year, anyways, he ended up leaving. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was crazy. Must uh, apparently it was um, personal reasons or whatever. Yeah. With his, I think his child has something yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, just it's just like the thing is, is we, we sometimes we put coaches and, and and people in authority on a position where we feel like they must know better because they're in authority. Mm-hmm. But everyone's just learning, bro. Everyone's learning on the job. Like everyone makes mistakes. Yep. Every everyone handles things poorly sometimes. Um, and I'm sure, I, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe there's way more to it, but I'm sure Ricky probably wishes he could have handled it differently. I'm, I could be totally oh, who, wrong. Who knows, man? Yeah. Like that's, but that, in, in saying that, that's, if that's him, that's him. That's him, yeah. Like, that's he does you things. just learn how to deal yep. with people. Everyone's different. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Totally, that's, bro. That's probably something else that you learn along the way is everyone's got different personalities. Totally. And it's just how you take it. Totally, bro. Everyone is really different Correct. when it comes to like big decisions as well that yeah. mean that have a lot of impacts. Okay, yeah. so you go to Castlewood Tigers, City yep. 15. So... So I ended up going to Melbourne 2014. Oh, right? 14, sorry. Yeah, how did yeah, that come so, out? Sorry. So to be honest with you, that, that was probably the a blessing in disguise for me. Yeah, okay. Because like I said to you, I'd had enough of rugby league then. Yeah. And I was like, I just want to go try my hand in rugby. Mm. Um, I want to cash in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a decent wage. Good timing. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and that fell through. Yeah. Oh, that fell no through. So I, so I signed... And then, because I, I didn't get a, um, I didn't get my visa because oh, I had that record. The record and that. Yeah. Oh, so it stems ah. back to, um, so and I only found out this was, I think this was the week after New Year's. Mm. My, my manager ringed me, goes, mate, you wouldn't believe it. I go, what's happened? Because because how it works over there, I don't know if you know J- Japanese rugby. Their preseason starts in March. Yeah. And then their season goes for twelve weeks, I think. Yeah, it's real short. So eh? it's, it's June, July. Oh. So you do preseason for March, <laughs> April, May, and then play June, July, right. or something like that. How good is and that? The, yeah, the money and like as you know would be yeah. massive over yeah. there. Um, but I got told in January, first week of January, mate, you, your contract's falling through because you can't get a, a visa. So um, that that sort of didn't sink in straight away, and I just sort of said to my manager at the time, "Yeah, so what are you going to do?" <laughs> and he's like, "Mate, I've got to put some feelers out there." So yeah. I said, "Sweet, no worries." So. Um, Put some feelers out and then Melbourne come about. And within two weeks, like anyone will tell you that's been to Melbourne, mm. like unbelievably professional. Man. Really? Like they're, it's a different level. they're just another level. Like, you know, mm. here I have been at Canterbury Bulldogs and Parramatta, mm. you know, two of the most established clubs in, in Sydney and mm. in rugby league. Mm. And then to experience the Melbourne Storm, Storm organisation and, you know, professionalism. Yeah. Not, it's not bagging Canterbury in that, it's but... It's just different, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's just different. So like, do you think you learn a lot at the Storm? Yeah, so so I reckon I, what I learned there, and it, this is this probably is what makes me think too, is I never really actually got taught how to play halfback. Yeah, okay, the intricate details. The intricate of details of playing as a half, never got taught that. Mm. I always got, growing up as a kid, I just like to do things off the cuff, mm. and, and I always just did it playing fun, like mm. tip, chase, you know, and, and it got me to where I was at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. But then going to Melbourne, it actually taught me how to play rugby league. Mm, that's Obviously, crazy. having Cooper Cronk, mm. who I believe is one of the best halfbacks oh, of the modern era, he's incredible, bro. Um, and it just he proved that going to Roosters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nail in the coffin when it comes to any arguments as to whether he's one of the goat yeah. halves, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I say this to a lot of people, bro. What I learned in one year with him mm. was probably just as much as I learned that 
eight years that I'd played. No way. Previous. So that's why it kind of makes me kick myself thinking, frick, like if only I had applied myself and someone was there to actually teach me how to play as a half and how to think yeah, as a yeah. half, things could have been different again. Wow. So did he? So they basically like Cooper was basically just showing you like this is what you do here, this is what you do here, or yeah, and and just his actions on mm. and off the field. So okay. you know when we're in meetings, you know how how how, and it's not only him. Sorry, it's 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 Craig. Yeah, Craig Cameron Smith as well, Billy as well. Like yeah. and and to be honest with you, it's the whole organization. Mm. So like you and I spoke about before this was was how Polynesians are so quiet. Mm. Well, when when you go down into their organization there. Your opinion matters just as much as Craig Bellamy's opinion. Or, okay, wow. Well. And 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 they they force you to speak up and okay. talk. You know. Mm. Um, so for me, I, I'm even though it was only one year, man. Like, I f- I, I feel like I'm I owe them a lot. Oh, really? For moving forward, made a lot of people have the same opinion as as a person, mm. but more so as a as a player as well. Yeah, wow. Well. You know that because like I, like I said, the two years at Para dented me massive. Mm. You know, confidence wise. Playing wise, I just didn't want to play anymore. I yeah. didn't like the game. It's over the game, yeah. But man, like I loved the game again after wow. one year. I loved it. I felt like I had confidence again back with me as a player. Mm. And I even, and I think it's because I understood the game more. Yeah, and I looked yeah. at the game in a different light, different way, a different view as opposed to what I did before. Because yeah. I've never played with structure. Mm. Any team that I've been a part of, yeah. they tried to bring structure in, but I didn't know how to play with structure. Mm. In that one year at Melbourne, I was able to learn how to play with structure and why there is structure. Yeah, well, how it works. And how effective it is yeah. if you apply it. Wow. It's crazy. So everything that I learned there, everything else that I'd learned, see you later. Yeah, wow. Like It's incredible, man. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other guys who've spent one or two years, and, and, and I can understand why players do so well when they go there. Mm. You know, they always, there's that little saying that they say, oh yeah, Melbourne Storms, like they always... Bring the best out of players. Hundred percent. Go to and, Melbourne Storm. You're basically guaranteed to be, to be the best version of yourself. Exactly. And 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 I say that now to a lot of the young guys. If I was an agent, and you were on the cusp of making first grade, I'd send you to Melbourne. Hundred percent. If you can make it in Melbourne, yeah, yeah. Number one, that just proves to yourself you're a great player. Number mm. two, you're a good person. Mm. Number three, you're going to learn so much mm. that you're going to be able to take with you anywhere you go, whether it's. A different aspect of life even you know what mm. i mean um and then number four the value of your playing market just goes up you know Through what the i mean roof. you're a storm player 100 percent. yeah um like you said you're your best possible player you could possibly 100 it's hard and it's hard work yeah, yeah but bro you'll appreciate it when you finish love bloody oh you know any, I mean? any good season i ever had was usually the hardest season i ever had training wise yeah um, okay, so then you go to the. Yes. So did you go there because you'd kind of felt love for the game again, in the sense of like, yeah, yeah. So so my manager was like, so do you want to? Because I think it had been five years then. Okay. So what was it? Um, it that. happened in two thousand and. I think like eight. Yeah. So two thousand thirteen, when I tried to go that. Yeah. It, it wasn't. I couldn't go then. I couldn't go yet. Yeah. But I, it was cleared then after that. So he's like, okay. so do you want to go or do you want to go to England? Yeah. And I ended up picking England because I I um I got a good deal sorted for me there and like mm. I, we've spoken about um I fell in love with the game again I mm. felt like a better player than what I was before I'd gone to Melbourne yep so I had all these confidence uh, yeah I love league again yeah. I can do it I can bring a lot to the team yep. experience yep. all that yep. kind of stuff yep and so you you were there for three years four and a half four and a half yeah, years four and a bit yeah and so was it your last year that you made the grand final no so 2017, we made the grand final. Okay. I had come back in at the start of 2019. Okay. Okay. So um, it was pretty, pretty. Um, it's pretty much what got me into what I'm doing now. Okay. I've always loved training, mm. um, but that's when injuries started occurring for me. Yeah, yeah you're getting a bit you older. Know, right, yeah, and like, yeah. and 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 I don't think it was because I was getting older. I just think because of the training that I was yeah, doing. Yeah, you weren't taking care of your body properly. Nah. And all that, all those years of not taking care of your body properly. Yeah, it just accumulates, right? So. Mm. Um, 2016, I struggled. I struggled to adapt to mm. the game over there. So I was I only played half the year. Oh wow! Yeah, I was on and off for most of that year. Um, 2000 and no, that was 2015. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 2016, I broke my foot round four. Yep. So I was out for the whole year. Yeah. Um, 2017, I played the whole year. 
that was the year that we made the grand final. Yeah. I ended up getting player of the, the club as well. Oh, really? How good is yeah, that? Yeah, so that was one of my best years there. So that was pretty much my only full year that I had. Wow. Post Melbourne. Okay. Yeah, so that year that I had there was the year that I'd planned to have for the rest of my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also tore my my my, my um, adductor that mm. year as well. So I had a few little niggles. Mm. Um, in 2018, I had pretty bad back issues, which yeah. led to hamstring tears, calf tears. Um, and just said, this is it. Like, uh, my body is probably not so, in space for it. So, yeah, I woke up in the off-season 2018, and I couldn't get out of bed. Fuck. Yeah, and I was like, frick, where's this come from? Yeah, yeah. Because um, halfway through 2018, I had to get an epidural in my back. <sighs> Obviously helped then. Yeah. But then... It's long term, not good oh, for you. So I, yeah. I couldn't get out of bed. Mm. And this was the day that we were supposed to be flying out to go to Greece with my family too. Oh, so, shit. So um, I rang my manager, um, my physio at the time, said, man, something's wrong with my back. I think mm. I've got... So I started doing research, Googling. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah. wrong with me? So it turned out I had sciatica. I had L45, this bulge. My okay. SI joint, SJ, was all just jammed up. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. It just was. Yeah. Um, well, your body being out of balance for so long, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, Thankfully, when I broke my foot, sorry, I'm just going back a bit. I met a guy. I was put onto a guy by the name of um, Ollie Matthews. Mm. Um, but he's gun gun physio. Okay. He's easily probably the best physio I've come across. Really? Wow. Um, so I, I started. To, I got to learn a bit about the body and how the body works because he mm. would treat me like it. Sort of says a. I had to go find this guy myself. So I had to get treatment outside of training. Yeah, I was wow. paying this guy yep. to treat me to get me back on the pitch. Mm. Um, and he was sort of just teaching me about the body, how the body works, you mm. know. And it was, it, I was intrigued because of my foot. Yeah. But then it just turned out, so then I had my adductor injury, same thing. So I got to learn about the body pretty much from 2016 when I met him till now. Crazy. It's like a uni degree without bloody going to uni 100%. pretty much. Yeah. So, um, I did, I did that. 2017 had a had a great year personally. I was very very grateful for it as well because of mm. the year I had. 2016, um, got player of the year mm. at the club, um, and then 2018 injuries. 19, like I said, I woke up pre preseason. So the whole preseason, my back was gone. Yeah, okay. And I'd try and run, and I couldn't run, couldn't move, couldn't bend. Um, and then it got to a point where I was getting pressured to just train and play. Yeah, okay. They, within a space of three months, I had five epidurals in my back. Fuck. Yeah. And they wow. say you're only supposed to get one every six months or something. Fuck. Hell. But you know what the mentality is like. Yeah. It's like we need to get you on the pitch as quick as we can. Yeah. We like, need you to play, 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 yeah. play. And then after a couple, I was like, listen, this is ridiculous. This so is I end up just taking in anti inflammatories. Yeah, so bad for you. Yeah, so I, I never took them. So yeah. that was the only time I did when I got over it. Mm. So I feel sweet now. Yeah, you know? So yeah, I okay. played one game. And straight after the game, it obviously was wearing off and I back to square one again, if yeah. not worse. Yep. So I was bedridden every day. Every t day off from training, I was bedridden. Far oh, yeah. Meanwhile, I got kids. Yeah. So it started putting things into perspective for me, you know, like, mm. frick, you know. But I never thought I'd retire. Mm. Um, and then after that round one game, played that, I tore my hamstring that week again. <sighs> so I'd, I'd torn my hamstrings a number of times oh, the, following, yeah. the year before because of this back injury. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was the last straw for both the, the club and myself. Yeah. So, um, so mate, like, what are you things. planning on doing? Mm. And the thing was, and that's that's what annoys me, right? Because I know if I'd known what I know now mm. and what I'm doing now with my training, I would have been fine. Yeah, okay. So that's what leads me to what I'm doing today yeah, okay. and and best way to put it is to keep players in the game like I said to you mm. like educate them educate them more like mm. don't don't depend solely on your team physios and your team doctors like yeah. you should do your own homework yep. because at the end of the day no one knows your body better mm. than you and you're the product at you're, the end of the day and that's that's your money maker yeah yeah absolutely yeah? so I can't stress enough to players now, like invest in your money maker. Yeah, was LeBron, LeBron spends like a million a year or something on his Yeah, body? And, and to be fair, that's pocket change to him, yeah, but yeah. you're not going to spend $1.3 million yeah. here. It's a principle of it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So, and you need to invest in your body. If mm. you want to play longer, you know, you want to stay injury free, mm. there's a risk that you can run with that and it can cost you ACL injuries, yeah, which can that. cost you seasons. That's going to cost you a contract. It's Co fucking, it could yeah. potentially cost you a contract or if it doesn't cost you a contract, it'll cost you your value. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it accumulates. Yeah. So for me now, and that's I've got a love for it, is keeping players in the game because mm. when people say, oh, that's it, he's he's got 
Bro, like I've reached out to dudes that are in their late twenties mm. that people are talking about saying should, should yeah. retire. Yeah. I'm like, no, bro, don't so retire. Yeah, yeah. Just do the right stuff. Like treat your body with respect and mm. train a certain way, and mm. you can play for another, you know, five six years. Yeah, it's crazy. You know. Yeah. Um, favorite rapper of all time. Rapper. Yep. Frick. Um. I'll probably have to say like the. Notorious, say hey, Biggie, Biggie, Biggie or Puck, Biggie or Puck, man. I mean, they're, they're the guys. You can't really go yeah. past them, eh? Uh, favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie, um, bro. There's a few. Um, if I say one and then you mention another, I go, oh, yeah, no, that, that one, one. No, that, that one. one. I, I think I don't. So I don't really have a favorite. I think it's more. I love the history sport movies. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the ones that 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 um, are about athletes, like Ali and that stuff. Changed that changed not just their respective sport. sport but change the world yeah. and you know what I mean mm. um, any, anything like that like Ali and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. the last dance documentary yeah great. yeah Incredible. yeah like yeah. so I'm just I'm just any, anything that can inspire other people to be great or be yep. better that's like it those sort of movies you know what I mean Ra, thank you so much for coming on appreciate it fuck what a journey uh, all from that you. one all from that your dad just saying bruh yeah go on fucking play now nah, thank you bro thanks for having me man boom Dunskies. <laughs>